All members of the committee should have their video on, but will remain muted until the chairman invites them to speak. All members of the press and public will remain muted unless they have registered to speak and the chairman will let them know when they can make their representation. The format of the meeting will be as per the agenda published and a copy of the officer presentations can be found on the committee website. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can I also welcome you to the meeting? I'm Councillor Filmer and Chairman of uh, the Development Committee. Um, just to give you some background as to how the uh, the meeting will, will operate this morning, uh, we'll take each application in turn. The officers will outline the application, followed by the public speaking time, and then members will then debate and decide on the applications. For members of the committee, again, just to remind you, if you could please in indicate via the uh, online chat that you uh, wish to speak and you'll be called in turn. During the debate, uh, there will be a proposer and a seconder for a resolution. Members will then vote on this proposal in turn, confirming that they have been present throughout the application being considered and will vote for, against or abstain. Votes will then be counted and the result announced. I will now ask the officers and councillors who will be taking part in this meeting to confirm that they can see and hear me and to introduce themselves. So if we start with the officers, is Mr Howlett present? Mr Howlett is not present for this meeting. Um, okay. I'll be taking the lead officer role for this meeting. Terrific. And Mrs De Vries, would you like to introduce yourself then, please? Thank you. Um, my name is Mrs De Vries. I'm the Principal Planning Officer for the West, um, so I'll be acting as Lead Officer for this committee. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms Parsons? Good morning, Councillor Filmer. My name is Shanta Parsons. I'm a Senior Planning Officer and I'll be presenting a couple of applications today. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr Evans? Thank you, Mr Chairman. My name is Liam Evans. I'm Senior Planning Officer and I'll be presenting the second application. Thank you. Uh, from our legal team, uh, Ms Lehman. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Dawn Lehman. I'm Legal Advisor to the Committee and I can confirm that I can hear and see you. Thank you. Uh, from our Democratic Services section, Mrs Nicholson. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Leila Nicholson. I'm the Committee Manager and I can confirm that I can see and hear you. Thank you. And then if we come to the members of the committee, uh, we'll start with Councillor Granter. Yes, good morning, Chairman. Thank you. Yes, my name is Councillor Graham Granter and I represent the Fairfax Ward here in Bridgewater and I can hear everyone loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pearce. Good morning. Um, Councillor Cathy Pearce, Westover Ward, Bridgewater, and I can confirm I can hear and see you. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, uh, Councillor Lee Gibson, East Over Ward in Bridgewater, and I can hear and see everyone that's spoken so far. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Oh, good morning, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Liz Scott here from Axbridge, from the Axvale Ward. I can confirm I can hear and see everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hendry. Southmore District Councillor Alistair Hendry, Burnham on Sea Central Ward. And yes, Chairman, I can see and hear everything. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Murphy. Good morning, Chair. Yes, my name is Mike Murphy. I am Councillor for Burnham North, and I can see and hear you. Thank you. Councillor Revens. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councillor Bill Revens from North Petherton Ward. I can confirm that I can hear and see everything. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kingham. Good morning, Chairman. Yes, Councillor Stuart Kingham, and I'm the ward member for the West Poldens, and I can see and hear all. Thank you. Councillor Bradford. Good morning, Mr Chairman. Councillor Alan Bradford, representing North Petherton Ward, and I can hear everything you're saying. Loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bolt. Uh, Brian Bolt, Ward Councillor for Cannington and Wemden. I can see and hear everything. Thank you. Councillor Perry. Yes, good morning. I'm Councillor Liz Perry. I'm Ward Member for the King's Isle Ward, and I can confirm I can see and hear everything perfectly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grimes. 
Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Tony Grimes, Deputy Chairman, representing Barrow. I can see and hear everything. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Glassford. Uh, good morning, Chairman. Uh, I can see you and hear you. I'm Alec Glassford from uh, Fairfax Ward. Thank you. And finally, myself, um, I'm Councillor Filmer um, and the Chairman of the Committee and have been able to see and hear all the, all the members and officers' responses. Uh, I would also mention that there are members of the public present today, who some of whom are here to, uh, to speak, who have registered to speak, uh, others who are here just to observe the, the meeting, uh, and we also have councillors of, of Sedgemoor and officers from Sedgemoor who are also here to observe the, the meeting present, uh, and that includes the portfolio holder for the, the development brief. If we uh, move on to the agenda itself, and, and just before we, we start, I will just point out at this stage that the application that was listed for on page 11 of the papers, uh, which was for Wemden Rise in Wemden, uh, has been withdrawn from our agenda today. Uh, the, the contentious element of the application, which was uh, the access onto the, the highway, which the Parish Council had uh, objected to, has been removed from that application, so it is purely the the actual extension side of it, and therefore that application is, is being dealt with as a delegated approval because the element that was the contention was, was removed from the, from the application. If we move on to the agenda then, we have uh, item one is apologies for absence. Mrs Nicholson, do we have any apologies for today, please? Thank you, Chairman. I've received apologies from Councillor Facey. Thank you. And all other members are present. Item two is urgent business. I'm not advised of any urgent business which isn't already covered on our agenda today. Uh, item three is public speaking time. For those members of the public who've registered to speak today, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will introduce each application in turn. Once the officer has presented the background and detail of the application, uh, we'll then ask the speakers to come forward to, to make their presentation. That will happen by Mrs Nicholson in enabling your microphone, uh, and we'll then just ask you to, to say hello so we can make sure that the microphone is, is working. Uh, I would just mention that you are limited to three minutes to address the committee. Uh, you will be notified when there is one minute to go, and that will be by Mrs Nicholson uh, ringing a bell uh, to try and make it less interrupting for you so you're, you're able to carry on without losing a train. Mrs Nicholson, would you like to demonstrate said bell? Okay, thank you very much. So, as I say, for, for all speakers, you'll hear that bell. That will mean you've got one minute to go. When you come to the end of the minute, I will then uh, step in and, and just tell you that you've reached the time if, if you have got to that point, and we will we'll have to ask you to uh, stop your, your presentation at that point. Item four is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations that members have for this morning's items? I have Councillor Bolt, please. Yes, I'm the uh, board councillor for Cannington, covering obviously Wembden. Um, that's items one, six, and 26. And I've taken no part in any discussions regarding these issues. Thank you very much. At the moment, I'm not seeing any other declarations, so that's fine. Uh, for, for members of the public, it's important if, if, if members have any involvement or a background on an application that that's made clear before we come to debate them. Uh, the only declaration we've had today is, is in effect, a non what's called a non-predetermination declaration. It basically means we have a standing order within our committee which says that members can either get involved at the parish and town council level or they can be involved at this committee. They can't do both because there would be the concern that if, if they did, potentially people may feel that they had already made up their mind on an application and in fact predetermined it before coming to committee. So as you've heard from the declaration today, the councillor had, had no involvement at the earlier stage and therefore is clear to come to this meeting and take part in the debate and, and vote on the items for coming forward. And there were no other declarations today. Item five on our agenda is the planning applications themselves. Uh, the first one that we have is on page one uh, and is, is in Wemden. And if I could ask Miss Parsons, if you could introduce this application, please. Thank you, Chairman. If you can just bear with me while I present my um, desktop. Shouldn't take very long. Uh, 
Um, can you see the, the uh, PowerPoint presentation? No? Not as yet. Yeah? Hold okay. on. We can now see your desktop, which is showing us the, the members on the screen at the moment. Thank you. I'll... Can you now see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes, we're at the at the good at the opening page. Good, excellent. Sorry about the delay. No problem. Thank you. Right, this is a planning application for the erection of a single story and two story rear extension. The site is located within Wemden. Uh, the address is four Blakes Road. The main considerations with this application relate to residential amenity and design and impact on the area. Now, the site is located, as I said, within Wemden. Um, it's the mid terrace of a row of uh, properties to the north of Blakes Road. And this is an aerial indicating the, uh, the same view. The church road is around to the right hand side to the east and the church is beyond there to the east just to get the bearings. So the application site is here, it's a mid terrace. Um, the aerial indicates the existing single story at the rear of the property, also indicates a neighbor's extension to the side. Now, there is a um, alleyway that leads between number 4 and 4A, and there's a gateway here that leads into the back of the garden for number 4. Now, this is a view at the rear, from the rear, looking directly into the rear of the property. So the application site that we're talking about is this property here. And you can see the neighbours, um, single store extension. And beyond this fence here, um, through this gateway here, is the alleyway that leads between the two properties. And this is a view looking at the single store extension on the other side. Now, the proposal, the, the two floor plans on the left, that's existing. Floor plans on the right is proposed. Um, currently, there's a single store extension on the rear of the property. It's proposed to extend single storey beyond the rear, but also to add a second floor above that existing single storey extension. Now, the, the top three elevations are existing and the bottom are proposed. And the side view here indicates the um, single storey extension to extend for a total distance of 5.5 metres beyond the rear of the existing house here, and at two-storey level, it's to extend 2.7 metres. And at the eaves, where the guttering is, it would stand at a height of 5.4 metres, and to the ridge of the proposed hipped roof, 7 metres, and this is looking directly at the rear. The, um, the applicant has helpfully indicated the line of the neighbour's single-storey extension here on the plan. This is just a closer view of the rear extension. Now, during the processing of the application, or late last week, the um, applicant has amended the drawings um, to provide some minor alterations so that the guttering no longer would overhang the, um, the boundary. There, it was raised by the neighbour that he was concerned about the guttering overhanging and, and encroaching onto his property. And that is just a, um, a bigger picture of the side elevations indicating the extent of the extension. Now, this um, this is the photo a photograph of the rear. These red lines are to for me to show you the side walls of the proposed extension, so that I can indicate the proximity in relation to the neighbours both sides. Um, the concern is there's no objection to the single story extension. There is an objection from uh, officer's view that to extend 2.7 metres out from the rear of the property in relation to the neighbour's windows, that that would re result in visual domination and loss of daylight. And therefore, the recommendation is to refuse consent on that basis. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. You'll see on this uh, application we have a, a speaker. So, Mrs. Nicholson, if I could ask you to uh, enable the speaker's microphone. Um, the speaker is John Richards, who I have as the applicant. 
Mr. Richards, could you just confirm that your microphone is working? Oh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. So just to remind you, you've got the three minutes to address the committee, um, and you'll hear the bell when there's one minute of that time left to go, so start when you're ready. Yeah, sure. I just uh, I wanted to raise some points, really. You know, um, we, you know, with, with the architect, the consideration was uh, given to the design, ensuring it was keeping to similar permitted developments in the area, uh, which the, when the parish council has sort of agreed with the application as well, just to, to emphasise that point. Um, we also understood, you know, the the, the scale of the extension, so we designed it with the hip roof. Uh, so it was incorporated specifically to reduce the overall appearance of the extension to minimise the impact. Um, as uh, Shanda Parsons has mentioned, there was a alteration that we made um, last week with the gutter in to ensure that none of the, um, the extension was overhanging the property's uh, neighbour's boundaries, uh, which we thought, you know, was a, was a thing we could just get done, so we did. Um, I know it's an opinion, but I just want to make you know make, make the point. Number two, uh, the adjacent neighbour hasn't raised any concerns regarding the plan intention that we've we've uh, submitted here, um, and it's just you know we've lived in this property now for well over seven years. Uh, we love living here, um, and the reason we submitted a planning application for this is for never grown family. Uh, we just need more living space. Really, uh, we have no desire to move from the area. So it was just a case of um, maximising what we probably could with the property. Now, you know, I, I hope that's into consideration really when sort of deciding on the on this, um, the 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 outcome of this application. Um, it's just uh, just trying to make the most of what we had here to make our our life more sort of livable with our growing family. And we've done everything we can to date. We did speak to our neighbours before submitting this planning. I know it doesn't really matter now, but you know they both were fine with it until until sort of the late, late last sort of hour before before it was going to hopefully get passed. Really, um, and that's kind of really what I want to want to say right at the moment. If that's okay. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. Right, members. Um, are there any comments or questions, please? Yep, I have Councillor Bolt. A question, really, um, for uh, Ms Parsons. We're looking at um, slide 12 here, and you're showing the two red lines beside the um, uh, the neighbouring windows. How far actually are they from the windows? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I thought this question may come up, but I can't measure that distance. Um, because the plans do not indicate the neighbours' windows. However, this is really partly why I use this slide to try to establish the general distance that can be made by a pretty um, valid judgment. The, the um, entrance to the passageway starts here, and so this is clearly the neighbours' property, and I believe the boundary of the neighbour, and this being the boundary of the neighbour on the other side. So the extension is going to reach right up to the boundaries on both sides. So I would take make a judgment that it's approximately 0.7 metres. If you look at the size of the entrance doorways, but I can't measure it simply because I've not been able to measure the neighbour's property, and the drawings down here don't show the windows. Thank you, Councillor Bolt. Could we possibly go back to the side elevation slide, which shows where the existing um, uh, extension on the neighbour is? That's it. Thank you. Just a moment. Yep, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got Mrs. DeVries. Thank you. Um, going back to the slide that Shanta just had up, slide 12, I think it was, um, looking at the position of the window above the joint access between the two, um, we have got the access door shown on the plans. So the far edge of the access door, which looks like it lines up with the far edge of the window, to the edge of where the extension is, is about 1.3 metres. 
sorry, Thank could you go through that again? The fire exit. Is so the the feet. access door that um, Shanta's got measured here in this position yeah. down the bottom of the slide, um, that really lines up with the top, um, the nearest edge of the neighbouring window. Right, yeah. I see. I see what you're saying. And the distance from that edge to the edge of where the extension is is scaling off on the plans as 1.3 metres. Right, thank you. Could, could I maybe just double check with Miss Parsons in terms of, of that access passage? Is, is that fully on one side of the fence or is that split between by the fence? No, that's, um, that's fully on one side. So if we okay. go back to the photographs, that's, that's the neighbour's window here. And that's the fence between the two properties. But that's a gateway. And through that gateway then is the access way here that you can just about see the black alleyway, if you like. Okay. Uh, I've got Councillor Kingham and then Councillor Gibson. Councillor Kingham. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, in the report, it says that there are um, other extensions similar to this, but I can't see anything that's two-storey. I mean, say there are a number of single stories in the picture. Um, say, so are there any other two-storey extensions in that facility? Ms. Parkins. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I haven't been, um, it's not been identified to me what those properties are. I've not seen anything that's comparable. And in my view, if we had an application for such an application, such an extension of such height and length and proximity to the neighbours, that um, our recommendation would be to refuse consent for that for the same reasons. Um, I know I have, I have had similar applications of similar, similar dimensions that have been refused, but um, it's not been pointed out to me what properties to compare this with. Thank you. Councillor Kingham, did you want to come back? No, that's fine. Thanks, Chairman. Okay. Councillor Gibson? Uh, yeah, hi. Um, two points. Um, I've, I've got actually a friend in Wembden that has an extension, a double-storey extension here, but it's not. It's on an older house, uh, so um, but there, there you go. She's got that. Um, um, am I right in saying this is the north, this, this property is facing north in this picture, the slide five? Yes, it is. Yeah, so none of the houses will be out the south, will be without the south facing sun. The property to my my left will be out without the east, without west facing sun, and the other side will be out without the east facing sun. In the morning, if the property, if, if the extension's built, maybe maybe take off. Is that is that a fair representation of of what might be lost in in the terms of light? Miss Parsons. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, the property does face north, and so it's not going to be blocking any southern sunlight. Clearly, the concern it's not it's not so much the eastern um, sun and the western sun, but it will block that light certainly but it's more a case of the the structure being built here the extension being such close proximity to the window that it will block light generally and it will um, provide or it will it will give an, a, a feeling of visual domination so if you can imagine the two-story element is coming from this point upwards, so the single story um, extension that's there now comes out 2.7 meters. So the, the two story element is going to be um, raising up at this point across the entire width of the building. Yeah. So that's why there's concern if, if you were using these rooms here, concern to have such um, a block of wall there that it would visually dominate and you would lose some light. Councillor Gibson. Yeah, thank you. But is there, um, there's been one concern maybe on the neighbours. It's the neighbours I would probably listen to a little bit as well. What, what their opinion is, you know, if they, if they, if they, if they maybe own their properties or um, the owners of the properties. Um, but you've only got one, one person as what one resident has spoken about that. Is that right? Yes, the um, neighbour on the right side of the photograph has objected. Objected, okay. Okay. Councillor Hendry and then Councillor Scott. Councillor Hendry. 
Uh, a question for Shanta Parsons, Mr. Chairman. If, if hypothetically this was actually turned down today, and then the, the, the applicant applied just to extend the, fur, the, the, the ground floor extension out, would the pitch on the roof, because it has to be below the existing two windows on the first floor, would the pitch on the roof be okay to extend to make a first floor extension? Because obviously if you had a two store, it goes right up and joins in with the main roof. But just supposing it was turned down, they come back with the first floor, would that, wouldn't that pitch on the roof be, would it be okay or not to, to extend out? Thank Ms. You. Parsons? Thank you. Let me just go back to some drawings. Um, there's no objection to them extending. Oh, it's not working. That's better. There's no objection to an extension at ground floor level to come out further than what is shown. So there's no, you know, we don't have an objection to this element because it's not significantly high to cause a problem um, and don't have a problem with this length here. Clearly, they would have to design it in such a way so that it can be drained appropriately and look appropriate in order for it to be, um, if they were only to have a single story. I'm not quite sure if that's answering your question because clearly if they followed the roof line up here, they would end up blocking their first four windows. Councillor Henry? Yes, no, that, that answer is absolutely fine. It, it just looked, if they get turned down for one to the end and come back with a single story, how would that roof, because because of the two existing windows? No, but you've answered the questions, and thank you for that. Thank you. We've got Councillor Scott and then Councillor Bolt. Councillor Scott? Yes, yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, just to confirm that there are no actual side windows on this extension, that would be east and west. I don't think so from the drawing, but just a confirmation, please. Ms Parsons? That's correct. Councillor Scott? Yes, thank you. Um, this is a difficult one. Um, I <laughs> reserve judgment to um, remain silent for a minute. Thank you. Councillor Bolt? Uh, same question I was going to ask is what's in the uh, the side extension of the 2.7 metres adjacent to the windows. OK. Are there any other comments or questions from members? Yep. Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I can understand why the applicant wishes to um, to extend the property. And it, it does look like it would be very uh, a very good extension, but... There has been an objection for the neighbour, and I, I, in my opinion, I can see how it could be overbearing. So I am, uh, I'm happy to uh, propose the recommendation to refuse permission, as per the um, officer's recommendation. Mrs Nicholson, did you want to come in? No, Chairman. But it's gone very quiet. Sorry about that. That was I, I, I had a message come up on my screen, so uh, I thought it was from you. Um, in which case, I've got Councillor Murphy next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I am... I would be very happy to support this application and second it because I feel that, first of all, it's, it's over ambitious. It's, that's, that's all it really needs to be said. They've tried to have an, a larger uh, extension than is really applicable in this case. They have a next door neighbor who has made a sort of a footprint. And I would suggest that from the future point of view, something that is emulating that footprint and being uh, in, in synchronicity with the footprint would be acceptable and I would have no hesitation in seconding this proposal that the uh, the uh, recommendation uh, by by Miss Hobbs is that uh, it should not uh, it's against D2 and D25 thank you I've got a number of speakers who've now come forward so just bear with me while I just catch up with who's on the list. Um, next, I have got Councillor Kingham. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Now, just going to um, Wembden Parish Council's um, response, it's uh, the grounds that they support this application. 
as it is similar to other permitted developments in the area. But as Mrs. Hobbs has said that, um, Mrs. Sorry, Mrs. Parsons has said that uh, there there was nothing similar. So I'm not quite sure on what they're using to uh, support this application. But um, my my feelings goes along with the officer's um, recommendation at the moment. Thank you. Okay, I've got councillors Henry Bolt. Granter and Perry. So, Councillor Hendry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was a little bit undecided at the start of this presentation, but as things have gone on, uh, I, I actually lean now towards with all the others, and for example, Councillor Mike Murphy, etc. So, yes, I, I I would have seconded it had it had it been available. That's gone already, so I am leaning towards what they've said already. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bolt. Yeah, it's just a couple of comments have been made about the um, the, the person that's made the complaint. Was that not addressed the overbear the overhanging eaves, or are the other ones the um, overbearing visual impact part of the same complaint? Miss Parsons. Thank you. Yeah, the on the agenda it states um, that we've got one objector, and the objector is to the west of the site. Um, and he objected on issues of overbearing visual impact, sense of enclosure and oppressiveness, loss of daylight, eaves, fascia and guttering would oversell the property. So the actual issue of the um, eaves, fascia and guttering oversailing was an issue that we um, was really a, a matter to be dealt with between the two parties, but clearly that's been dealt with. But um, so therefore the, um, the neighbour would still object. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Councillor Granta. Yes, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> well, I think the officers um, have, have got this one exactly right. Um, D2, D25, um, over-dominance, unacceptable, loss of light to the neighbours. Um, uh, what more can you say? I think it's a little too little too much there. And, and um, I, I, I know, I think Cathy um, Pierce. Um, Put forward the officer's recommendation. I think that was seconded, but if not, I would have seconded that. And I agree with the officers that it is overbearing for the neighbours, and, and, and um, I think they um, summed up quite well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it certainly has been seconded. So, uh, last speaker I've got on my list at the moment is Councillor Perry. Um, yes, um, I, I will support the officer's recommendation as well to refuse this application due to its overbearing height, etc. So, yes, I agree with the officers. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there are no further comments from members, I will move towards the vote. Uh, and as said earlier, what I will do is come around to each member in turn, just for them to confirm that they were uh, present throughout the whole of the presentation and debate, and then to ask for their uh, the other for, against, or abstaining on the proposition, which is for refusal. So if we start with, uh, let's start with Councillor Granter. Councillor Granter. Sorry, uh, Chairman, I was muted at the moment. Yes, yes, I, I've heard, I was present at all, all the debate, and um, I'm for the officers recommending for a refusal of this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Glassford. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I was present for the for all the debate, the debate, and I I am for the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Chairman. I confirm I've seen and heard the whole presentation, and I am for the officer's recommendation for refusal. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Hello. Yeah, I I seen I I saw and heard all the debate, um, and I'm for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I can confirm that I've seen and heard the whole debate, present. and I'm been present throughout. And um, I am for the officer's recommendation for refusal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hendry. I can confirm, Mr. Chairman. I've seen and heard everything. Uh, absolutely happy with this, and I'm quite happy to go with the recommendation for refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Councillor Murphy. 
Darren, this keeps going in and out. I've heard in the, the, all of the presentation and I um, for the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much. Councillor Rebens. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yes, I can confirm that I've seen the presentation and heard everything. Listen carefully to the debate and I will support the proposal to refuse. Thank you. Councillor Kingham. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've been present and I've heard the whole debate and I'm for the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I've heard and been present for the whole debate and I'm supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bolt. Yes, present throughout the whole application, heard all of the debate and for the recommendation. Councillor Perry. Yes, I was. Uh, I heard and saw all the debate and I'm for the officer's recommendations. Thank you. Councillor Grimes. Yes, Chairman, I've seen and heard all the presentation. I'm for the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. And, and likewise, I was here for the whole presentation, heard the debate and um, I'm also for the proposal for refusal. So, Mrs Nicholson, if you could just confirm the vote, please. Thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that that was unanimous. So, 14 in support of the officer recommendation. Thank you very much. So that is clearly carried. So, so permission for that application is is refused. If I could ask members to turn to our next application, which is on page six of your uh, papers or on your uh, agenda and we remain in in Wemden and move to Lindhurst Crescent and Mr Evans if you'd like to introduce this one please thank you chairman hopefully that's uh, up and working uh, so this Just application one, one moment Mr Evans it's it's, it's getting there but it, right we're, we're with you now Okay, so uh, this application is for a two-storey extension to the rear of two Lyndhurst Crescent. If we go to slide two. Um, so this is a summary of the relevant local plan and neighbourhood plan policies uh, in respect of policies D2, which relates to design, D25, which relates to a residential amenity. Um, and the Wemden Neighbourhood Development Plan, which uh, we've taken uh, from policy WB1, which is also related to design. So the application site is located in the centre of Wemden, indicated by the red uh, splodge there. Um, the site is within proximity of the school uh, and Wemden Rise here. Uh, the property is part of a cul-de-sac with a number of detached uh, chalet bungalows and, and detached dwellings. The application site is outlined in red on the plan here. And the proposal is for the erection of two-story extension to the rear elevation of the property. There's also the proposal for a, a porch, replacement porch to the front elevation, as well as an extension to the existing flat roof dormer window to the front uh, roof slope. Um, this is the existing uh, elevations and floor plans, uh, just giving you an idea of what the existing property looks like and is laid out as. So the property itself is set forward of the neighbouring property to the west and has a detached garage which is with the ownership of the applicant and a driveway to the front here and to the side of the property. So these are the uh, proposed floor plans and elevations. The proposed two-storey extension is indicated in the hatched shaded uh, drawing here. So this is the rear elevation as it's see, as seen from the rear garden. As you see, it's a, it's a large pitch roof extension which will match the height of the ridge and eaves of the existing chalet bungalow. A ground floor level will have a kitchen, dining area, a shower and a utility. And at first floor level, we'll have another bedroom uh, with two ensuite bathrooms uh, extending off of the existing floor space at first floor level. Um, I just want to make a note that the uh, presentation that did go out with the uh, report at the end of last week did have a couple of discrepancies in the uh, distances on this side of the application site. Um, I have indicated the correct measurements here now just for members' information, just to give an idea of the distances between the proposed extension and the shared boundaries uh, with the neighbouring property. So there's a 4.4 metre distance to the west and a 3.2 metre distance to the east where it meets the boundary and it is closer to proximity. This is the distance between the existing dwelling and the boundary itself, which is uh, separated by a store extension on the side there. 
so this is the this is the existing dwelling as uh, seen from the rear garden area. So at the moment it has a, a flat roof dormer window to the rear. This will be removed and replaced with the existing uh, the extension coming off the back here. So this is a view from the same spot, but looking to more towards the east. So this is in the direction of the southeast area with the two uh, existing residential properties. Uh, for those listening, we're on slide eight. Uh, this is indicating the location of the neighboring properties to the east. Um, we've had a, a number of objections from residents regarding the pro property and the extension to it in respect of overshadowing uh, and loss of light to those rear gardens. It should be noted that the proposed extension is measured as approximately 9.8 metres away from the existing rear conservatory of this neighbouring property here, as indicated on the submitted block plan, um, just to give you an idea of the distances involved between the existing properties and the extensions. Sorry, extension. This is the uh, property to the west, so this is Fall Linters Crescent, and this is the applicant's existing garage. Uh, the proposed extension itself will not project beyond the rear elevation of this property as this property is set significantly back from the position of the applicant's property. So the extension itself will be broadly in line with the side elevation, which as you can see contains no windows on the side. So there will be no loss of light to any windows on this side. Um, this is an elevator, uh, this is sorry, this is the view from the street scene of two Lintos Crescent. This is the application property. So this existing porch here will be removed and replaced with a pitch roof porch as indicated on the plans and this existing dormer window will be extended across the front elevation of the property in that area there. As you can see the property itself is significantly forward of the neighbouring property with the extension in behind and will be sited adjacent to the side elevation of the garage here. Here is another shot from Lindhurst Crescent further to the east. This is two and four Meadow Park on your right hand side of the screen here. The arrow here indicates the extension coming out on the rear elevation with the roof line matching the existing ridge. Uh, due to the design of the extension itself, the ridge line will be set into the center of the property and therefore the highest point of the extension will be significantly away from the boundary. The eaves level will also be matched so there will be a, a gradual roof slope uh, coming down here on the rear and we will then have the extension projecting to the rear. This photograph also gives an indication of an existing dormer window further down, which shows an extension across the entire frontage, which is similar in scale and design to that proposed on the proposal here. This is a Google Street image of the street scene. Again, just to give you an idea of the distances involved um, in terms of reflection of the existing pattern of development and the distance of the proposed extension and existing property in relation to its neighbours. So in summary, the, the proposal is for a two-storey extension to the rear uh, with a porch and dormer window to the front elevation. The extension in terms of its scale will match the height of the ridge and the eaves of the existing dormer bungalow and it's considered based on its location to the rear it will have a minimal impact on the surrounding area. Uh, the dormer window extension in the porch will be in keeping with the character of the property and it's considered based on the dimensions that are taken from the plan submitted that the proposal will not have a significant impact on the amenities of the existing residential properties in the area. It's considered on this basis that the proposal complies with policies D2 and WB1 of the neighbourhood plan uh, in respect of design and also policy D25 of the local plan in respect of residential amenity. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, as you'll see, we have a number of speakers on this application. So if we come to the, the first speaker, Anne Eisen, um, Mrs. Nicholson, if you could enable the speaker's microphone, please. And if I could just check, Ms. Eisen, if, uh, if you're able to just confirm the microphone is working. Hello. Yes, good morning. Excellent. That, that certainly we can hear you clearly. So, again, just okay. remind you, you've got the three minutes and you'll hear the bell when, uh, when there's one minute left to go. So start when you're ready, please. Thank you. Our objection to the proposed extension has been in relation to the design of the first floor at the rear of the property at Two Linters Crescent. The design and view as shown and plans as the east elevation will result in an unacceptable level of overdominance to our property due to the height and mass of the tiled roof, resulting in a loss of natural light and visual amenity in contravention to policies D2 and D25 of local planning specifications. Inwood Estate was built with a high quality design which meant that the estate was open plan and residential houses were not built on top of each other with space between and around the buildings. 
In keeping with this, the property site of number two Lindhurst was purposely constructed, set forward from other properties in line on Lindhurst, so as not to have any impact on the rear of properties at numbers two and four Meadow Park, therefore protecting the right to light, overshadowing and visual dominance pertaining to those properties which face directly to the rear of number two Lindhurst Crescent. The effect on these properties, please, must be taken into consideration. Prior to the Wemden Parish meeting on the 9th of March, a site visit was attended by the Parish Council and our local ward councillor, and our objections were also agreed at the Parish Council meeting. In our letter of objection, dated the 23rd of February, we specifically requested a site visit by the planning officer, as is our right to know about. Had this visit taken place as requested, we believe that the full impact of the proposed extension roof design would have been seen and that it is against policy D2 which states that the development should not harm the amenity value of the occupiers of nearby buildings and also D25 which states that it should not impact neighbouring property by overshadowing or visual dominance. The proposed roof extension will result in a loss of light to the rear main living space of our property. The current layout of two linters enables our source of natural light, particularly during the low level sun months during spring, autumn and winter coming directly from the space between number two and four linters. This source of light will disappear if built as proposed. At the rear of our property, to the left, our original garage building, and to the right, high-level trees running along our boundary with Inwood Road. So our main source of light is currently from the area surrounding two linders into the rear rooms of our property. We are able to provide photographic evidence or welcome a site visit if required within safe distancing guidelines. The photos submitted by the applicant are not a true representation of the impact on our property as none have been taken directly opposite the rear of our property from the actual extension site. To summarise, due to the proximity of our rear boundary, the height massing of the proposed rear roof extension, loss of light and the detriment of our immunity is contrary to policies D2 and D25 as supported by the Wemsden Parish Council. I hope you will refuse it as it stands. Please note, had the planned designs been in keeping with other properties on the estate, they would have not had such an impact on our property that we have lived and enjoyed for 37 years, and we wouldn't have had as many objections to this. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, and, and well within time. Thanks. <laughs> if we can move on to our, our next speaker then, please, uh, which is uh, Mike Solomon, and I believe Mike is speaking on behalf of the Parish Council today, if we could just enable the speaker's microphone. And Mr. Solomon, if you can, can, can you, can, yeah, you can confirm it's working because we just heard you. Uh, <laughs> again, if you start when you're ready and and keep a, a, an ear out for the for the bell at two minutes uh, and we will let you have uh, obviously that last minute to go once you get to that point. So start when you're ready, please. Uh, well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, councillors. Officers, thank you all very much for your time this morning as the Chairman has introduced. I'm Mike Solomon. I, I chair the Parish Council at Wendon and I'm speaking on behalf of the Parish Council. Uh, let me first say that uh, the, the previous application was all about visual dominance and loss of daylight and I suppose that's what's important in this one. And there is an element of judgment. Uh, when as a Council we first saw the proposals for the extension to two Linters Crescent, um, rather like the planning officer, I think, we didn't see anything that would particularly cause a problem on the drawings. Uh, the extension proposed was significant, certainly it was significant, but there are a number of houses in, inward that have had significant extensions added. It really was only when we visited the site uh, and saw the impact on the property at Two Meadow Park that we really felt that we had to object, and as a committee, it was a unanimous objection. Uh, the proposed extension will clearly dominate the garden uh, of the previous speaker. Um, it, 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 the height is such that it will block out certainly the evening sun um, and sometimes the evening sun is the very time that you want to enjoy a little bit of respite at the end of the day. Um, living in a village like Wendon, uh, the councillors are always in a difficult position because quite frequently we know both the applicants and the objectors. We try and get to know everybody in our village um, and uh, I'm just saying to you that we would ask you to support our objection and then encourage the planning officer to, to get together and perhaps see the parties. Go and see the site yourself, um, because if there is a way that there's an extension to be built, and we do understand that an extension needs to be built, um, we could find a way that doesn't have such a material impact on the lives of Mr. and Mrs. Eisen. Um, and, uh, the dominance of that 
their rear garden. Uh, that's really all we want to say. And uh, thank you all. Please do consider that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I would just mention at this point, I've, I've got a number of councillors who have indicated they want to come in, which I will do once we've had our speakers. I will come to those councillors for them to, to have their say before we get into the debate, because I think there may be a couple of questions about declarations, um, but we'll get to that in, in just a moment. Um, our next speaker is uh, Councillor Dyer. If we can enable Councillor Dyer's microphone. Hello. Hello, Councillor Dyer. Uh, we can hear you. So again, just to remind you, you've got the three minutes, as you know, and start when you're ready and, and keep an ear out for the bell. Yes, I am concerned about this application. Um, and I think the minimum that ought to happen is a site visit, because when you look from Mr. and Mrs. Ison's, um the rear of their, their rear window, it dominates massively compared to all the other extensions, which are lower. And, and that's that, um, uh, that house, it, it, the pictures that are shown on, that have been taken by the applicant, um, obviously the type of uh, angles they've taken and the lenses they've used make the houses seem a long way away. They're not a long way away. And I think um, I was asked to go and have a look. And I had a look. And as soon as I had a look, I could see there's a problem here. So I don't have a problem with an extension, but this is massive. It's full height and the roofs are very steep. So are very high. And so when you bring that extension back, it's going to block out a lot of their afternoon and all their evening light. So that's the basis that I'm objecting on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Dyer. Uh, we have one final speaker, which is uh, Catherine Searle. Um, again, Mrs. Nicholson, if you could enable the speaker's microphone and if you could just confirm that it's working just by saying hello. <laughs> is Hello. Ah, terrific. Thank you very much. That's working well. So, again, start when you're ready and you'll hear a bell when you've got one minute left to go. Please Thank start. You. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak at your meeting this morning. Um, when we were considering the type of extension for our house, we felt that a re-extension would be the best option, minimising any viewing impact from the front of our property. Many other properties in Wembden have had large side extensions, which in turn make many of the detached houses almost semi-detached by removing the space between the houses. We do not wish to do this. Um, some of the properties include 3 Brantwood Road, 27 Inwood Road, 1 Meadow Park, 12 Meadow Park, 6 Lindhurst Crescent and 22 Lindhurst Crescent. We did consider our neighbours um, in our when we had the plans because we visited them to show them the plans before we had actually submitted them to the council. Um, there's minimal impact to light loss on three neighbouring properties and no loss of light into their houses. We ensured that the design was aesthetically pleasing in keeping with the design and roof line similar to the existing chalet bungalow style. And indeed, the roof line is similar to a house in a semi-detached version of the chalet bungalow in Grasmere. The front dormer window extension is in line with many others within Wemden, and the porch is to replace an old plastic porch area with a modern brick built one. We wanted to quickly cover points made by the objectors. We have accommodated changes where necessary, ensuring that our Velux windows do not cause any loss of privacy by providing a frosted glass which only opens upwards and not from the bottom. There's also, there is always a case of privacy, but we do not believe that our house was originally located sympathetically to accommodate just one other house at the exclusion of others, um, which is the point made by one objector. The objection from number two, Meadow Park, um, failed to mention that their bedroom directly overlooks our garden and the back of our house. We have no unobscured windows to actually look onto our own garden presently. The parish council has stated the extension is overbearing in scale, but you will not see the main extension from the front of the house the number of properties within pro close proximity to our home have had sizable extensions without planning objections. Thank you for listening to us. Uh, so just to confirm you that, that the bell means you've got one minute to go if you wish to oh, continue sorry. to speak. Yeah. Please, okay. please do carry on and we'll give you a few seconds to make up for the ones that you've lost coming sorry. to a, a premature end. Don't worry. Okay. Thank Keep you. going. Um, so um, the number of extensions within close proximity to our, to our home have had sizable extensions. 
without any planning objections. The house cannot be seen from Inward Road due to tree lines. The loss of light to neighbouring properties is minimal and not to the main living area. It will only result in a small amount of shade into a small portion of their garden. Thank you very much for listening to our views and taking into consideration our points. Thank you. Thank you very much, and that was that was well within time. Right, before I come to, to members, um, as I mentioned, there's a number of members who've indicated, and I believe it may be related to uh, advice on decorations. So I will come to those members just to confirm what, what their issue was and whether it's the debate or, or information. So, Councillor Hendry, were you wanting to speak on the debate or did you need to get some clarification in terms of a declaration? No, I, I don't have a declaration, uh, Mr Chairman. I just That's wanted to speak fine. about it. Thank you. Okay, bear with me one minute. I'll come back to you. But I think, Councillor Kingham, you wanted some advice from Mrs Lehman. That's correct, um, Chairman, yes. Um, just seeing the, seeing the application here today, realising exactly where it is. I am a, uh, a friend of the uh, the neighbour at number four. And I just wonder what my situation would be. Mrs Lehman. Um, Councillor Kingham, um, if you are a friend with the neighbour at number four, um, sorry, bear with me, is that, is that um, next door? I haven't got a report up in front of me at the moment. Yes next door um, then um, there are two issues to, to consider um, ha has she spoken today the neighbor she she has hasn't hasn't she not not that particular neighbor oh I see right okay um, because because um, the issue the issue for you um, councillor uh, King is whether you may have a um, you, you may have a um, predetermination if you if you feel that um, because you know the neighbor it might it might make you biased in your decision then I would suggest that you possibly may be predetermined on the matter and if you feel that you are predetermined or that if you feel you are predetermined, I would I would come out of the meeting. If you feel that you're not predetermined and you're happy to listen to all the merits of the argument, you have an open mind. Um, again, you will not be predetermined, so you will be able to stay in the meeting. But that's entirely up to you. Councillor Kingham, um, it's a bit awkward. I noticed that, that um, number four haven't um, put any comments in regarding the planning application. So I think the fact that they haven't commented, then I would be happy to continue and uh, listen to the debate. C can I just possibly comment? Because I have some, some. If if we're talking about a, a member of the public who was formerly a councillor on on this council, then then I believe there is a comment that has gone in in terms of of the application. Um, but it is up to it is up to members to decide whether their relationship with that neighbour is is of a as 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 you've heard from the legal device advice if it's a close friendship then obviously you could potentially be seen to have a prejudicial interest um but that's that's up to members to make up their mind the fact that you just simply know somebody is is not going to be an issue so it's it's down to you councillor kingham to decide how how uh, how close that friendship is and whether you think it would prejudice your views thank you chairman yes i think i should um withdraw okay thank you very much so that's a uh, so we'll put that down as a, a prejudice interest because of your knowledge of the of the of the your friendship with the neighbour next door. Yes, um will I need to leave the meeting? Yes, you would. I don't know whether that's something that uh, Mrs. Nicholson does, is that something we need to help Councillor Kingham leave the room or is it up to him to leave the room? If Councillor Kingham can leave the meeting and then I will invite him back in when we've completed this application. So need to keep himself live as such but out of this meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you very how much. Do I, how do I keep myself live? <laughs> just come it, out of the meeting for the moment, yeah, please. Yeah, if if you do, just go with the red button to to leave the meeting, and then we'll we'll contact you to to ask you to come back in. Councillor Revens, is is yours a relation to a, an interest or or part of the debate? Uh, part of the debate, please, Mr. Chen. Fine, and Councillor Bradford, um, likewise, is that part of the debate or is that? as a declaration. Councillor Bradford. Sorry, part of the debate, Mr Chairman. OK, and, and likewise, I've got Councillor Scott. Can you just confirm, is that part of the debate or were you wanting to equally discuss interest? Yeah, I think I should declare an interest, Chairman, and leave the, the meeting. OK. okay. 
and that again is because of your friendship with a, a neighbour? It is, yeah. Probably um, more of a friendship, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so again, if you can uh, press your red button to leave the leave the meeting, and Mrs Nicholson, if you could just confirm when both councillors Kingham and Scott have, have gone so we can continue. I can confirm... Now I can confirm that both have now left the room. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, so if we come back to the actual the application and, and the discussion, um, my first speaker that I had down from members was Councillor Hendry. So would you like to uh, start off, please? Good morning, Mr Chairman. Um, there's a lot of talk here about policies D2 and D25. Specifically D25, I, I just don't see the problem here because the houses at the back, the, the two, I don't know the house numbers, I can't recall, but the two at the back of the fence, they, they are actually two-storey themselves. So their bedroom windows effectively look over the first garden. The properties are far enough apart that there, there can't be a shadowing, a loss of light, a loss of privacy, and there, there can't be. I just don't, that's it. That's the one I'm looking at now. There's, there's a far enough gap between the extension and these other two properties. Uh, I could go on and on here, but specifically policy D25, I think, is, is perfectly OK. I just don't see a problem with this. So I'm going to be OK with this. But I'll pass you on to the next the next councillor. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Evans. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Good morning. Um, I'm, I, well, similarly, I'm looking at policy D25 and also the yeast elevation uh, diagram that uh, was shown in the presentation. And I perhaps come to a slightly different conclusion to Councillor Hendry that I think there may be um, an element of overbearing. Um, in normal times, I would be suggesting that we go and take a look. Um, I would ask for guidance on a site visit uh, as to whether that is possible, particularly I'd like to see a site visit in the evening, because I think that's when we can actually judge the, the, the impact on of light on on the neighbouring property so i would appreciate officer's guidance please yeah i think mrs de Reed, you've indicated you wanted to uh, comment on that yes thank you um just in respect of site visit because i know it did come up in a number of the speakers as well um covid restrictions are relaxing um but not to the extent that i feel members would be able to undertake a site visit um, with regards to policy D25, the um, wording is whether the development could result in unacceptable impacts in terms of loss of light. Um, obviously, officer's judgment is that it hasn't. You've heard concerns from the neighbours um, that it would result in an unacceptable impact. Um, it's in front of members today for the debate. So, unfortunately, I, I don't think carrying out a site visit is an option at this moment in time. So the judgment has to be based on the information you've got before you. Um, how you balance that impact. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Thank you, thank you very much. I, uh, clearly, the word un you're absolutely right. Clearly, the word unacceptable is the is the debating point, and it's very difficult to judge whether this is acceptable or not without the appropriate information. So, with without that, then and without the option of a site visit, then we are left with either a deferral or to re refuse the application at this stage. Um, I'd be interested to hear what other members think. Thank you. Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr Chairman. It looks as if when did we go on extension mad this morning? Um, I'm just going to say, are we talking about a house or a chalet bungalow? People keep on mentioning house in our debate this morning. Well, to, my, to what I'm reading here, it's a detached chalet bungalow. And I think things like this go away from the fact of a Shally Bungo, personally, that's, that's all I wanted to say, Mr Chairman. I still want to hear a debate. It's a very difficult decision to make. This, If we would start putting this on all the bungalows and what have you, and it goes against the principle of a bungalow, perhaps. And bearing in mind, we've got new estates maybe granted around Wemden in, 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 present, in present years or months. We've got to be careful what we're doing, I think we have. You could detract from the whole area sometimes, and I wouldn't be best happy with it. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I've got a number of speakers who've indicated, um, Councillors Bolt, Gibson, Hendry, Murphy and Perry. So um, if we start off with Councillor Bolt. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, can we go back to slide six, please? Uh, 
I'm, I'm looking at the top row. Uh, am I looking at the elevation on, on the third one on the top row? I'm, I'm, yeah, that's it. Um, is that the elevation that's going to be seen from um, uh, Meadow Park, numbers two and four? Yes, that's the east elevation. That's the view that's from that direction, yes. So basically, we're looking at, at one and a quarter, one and a half times the actual side view that they've got a house. So they're going to have that much again to look at. Yes, yeah, so the, the shaded area is the extent of the extension at ground floor level here with the roof above here. I, I, I don't think that it meets the, the visual dominance. Uh, you know, there will be a loss of light, obviously, with the direction it's in. But the visual dominance of that is, is huge. Can we go to slide 10 just to demonstrate that? So basically, this is the, the same view without obviously the extension on. We're going to see that much again coming out directly above where your cursor is. So the, the applicant's garage is here. The extension itself does not project beyond the garage itself. It's oh, probably oh, sorry, about here. So. Uh, sorry, Mr. Evans. Have we got, uh, I thought slide 10 was showing the, the, the view from the uh, meadow, the meadow park premises. No, these have been taken from within the garden of the applicant. I mean, could we go back to the the plan drawing which shows meadow park uh, and everything from from above? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you. So basically, where we're looking at number two, the whole side of that, it, it, we're going to basically build the same out again and slightly bigger behind. It, it, that has got to be visual dominance, surely, to to affect numbers two and four in Meadow Park. Is there anything else you want to add, Councillor Bolt? I, I'm, I'm wondering about Mr Evans's comments to that, please. Um, Mr Evans? Well, the 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 application is proposing the a sort of a, an extension, which is the, the same ridge and same eaves as the existing property. The ridge itself will be in approximately the, the midway point of the existing property here. So, in terms of the highest part of the roof, this will be approximately the location of where that, that will be. Then the roof slopes down to the same single-story eaves level here, and then we have this area here between the existing property's rear conservatory so we're not this is I mean this is the re elevation of the property where you saw the two first floor windows here this is the distance we're talking about between the single story element or you know the, the lowest part of the extension here and the existing property of number two and its rear elevation here so yes that there is that distance between there so we consider as officers that there is a sufficient distance between the highest part of the the development and the design of it which has the sloping roof coming down towards the shared boundary and the eave level here we we consider there's a significant amount of of space or an acceptable I should rephrase that an acceptable level of space between the existing property its existing windows on the rear elevation and the highest part of the roof not to cause significant overshadowing or visual dominance, um, but I'll leave it for members to decide whether they, they agree or not. Thank you. Councillor Bolt, did you want to come back at all? Or? Um, possibly in a moment, thank you. That's fine. Um, I think Mrs Debris, you wanted to comment? Yeah, it, it was just to um, expand a little on, on what Liam was saying in terms of footprint. Um, Councillor Bolt is right, the, the projection of the extension is, is nearly the width of the existing building. The existing building runs gable side to side so effectively at the moment the um, number two has a, a full height gable quite close to the boundary the extension coming off is running the gable um, to the north so whilst the footprint is um, sort of relatively sizable the eaves height of the proposal is relatively low um, with it being a chalet bungalow and then the ridge sloping away at distance so 
whilst the roof line will be visible from the neighbouring property and whilst the height of the roof line may cause a degree of um, overshadowing during certain parts of the day, the the highest part of the roof um, I think has been specified as 7.4 metres and it's set a distance of 14.1 metres away. So in terms of, you know, officers accept um, that they've been out on site, they've had a look at the application site and assessed um, the location of the development and where it's going and then the potential separation distance. And as pointed out by, um, I think it was Councillor Hendry um, early on, the neighbouring properties are two storey as well. So the the application um, itself is described as a two storey extension, but it's almost a, a one and a half storey extension because it's got accommodation within the roof space with the eaves being um, effectively matching the chalet bungalow as existing. So with those impacts balanced, um, officers were not considered that the impact was unacceptable, but obviously I'll, I'll leave members to continue to debate. Thank you. Um, just just from my own uh, views, I, I think um, I can understand the officer's recommendation in terms of, of what's in front of us. I think it is going to be one of those applications where members need to to use their judgment in, in as to whether these are, are issues that uh, that they are feeling are are significant enough. Um, one other thing I would ask, Mr. Evans, could you put up slide number? I think it was number twelve, which was the sort of street scene looking side on. Um, the the the. I mean, must have, my my concern is obviously, I think the, the the existing dwelling is quite a modest dwelling in terms of its size and and dimensions, and I'm just trying to visualise the the extension coming off the back of of that from the street scene there, and it it is a to me, it feels like it's a slight change of character of that area of the of the street scene um, as to whether there would be an issue there. Um, but I think it is it is a very balanced one, this one, as far as I'm concerned. And, and certainly um, I'm, I'm still waiting to hear the rest of the debate before making up my mind. Um, Councillor Gibson, please. Hello. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm still not getting the distance between the back of the garden at two at Meadow Park uh, to the proposed extension. Um, I can see that the extension doesn't pass uh, further down than the end of house two um, at Meadow Park. But um, I would suggest, um, as Councillor Revens has, is a, a site visit because I don't get the full picture even looking at these well-documented slides. Um, and I, I'd like to explore that really and ask uh, would shifts, well spaced shifts, be uh, be a suggestion of being able to go and visit uh, the garden? Being it is, it is outside. It's an outside space. I I think as as I, and I'll take advice from 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 legal if 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 they've got any view. I, I think the difficulty we would have with a site visit at present under the the current issues would would be that we cannot do a site visit i think if members wanted to go for a site visit they would have to take in mind that they would have to go for a a deferral for us then to have a site visit when when rules allowed but obviously that could be several months potentially before that would be the case and we may find ourselves in a in a non-determination uh, position so i think as i i don't want to put words in in council revenue's mouth but i i think he came down to the fact of its if, if members are significantly concerned about that, they either need to go for the deferral and realise it could go on for some time, or they need to go for a, a refusal um, if they feel that it's unacceptable from what we've seen. Councillor Evans, can I just come back to you to make sure if you're happy with that <laughs> summary? Uh, yeah, delighted with that summary. Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Councillor Filmer. And I would like to formally propose that uh, we have a deferral pending uh, the time in which we can take a site visit. I would hope that any authority would uh, understand the dilemma we're in um, that we can't that, that we can't comply with one law because we'd break another law is a very yeah you know, we're we're between we're between the proverbial rock and a hard place aren't we? Yeah, I, again, would would just state to members obviously as per our last meeting we know that applicants have the right to go for a non-determination and that will then de determine it outside of our our control. But that's uh, Mrs. Lehman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, actually, I was going to um, agree with the points you made um, earlier. Um, um, clearly, current restrictions doesn't allow site visits when they are lifted. Then we can review the situation in terms of um, 
the um, determination period of this application, we may well be um, in, in a position of non-determination whereby the applicant can appeal. So those are the issues that we should um, keep in mind um, when we when we look to defer an application, um, whether or not um, Mrs. De Vries would like to add anything. Um, um, I, I will leave it at that. Thank you, Chairman. Mrs. De Vries. I think my only concern with the deferral process is that there's no clear end date in terms of when a site visit will actually be possible for this site. Um, and there are other risks that have to be taken into consideration in terms of if all members would be appropriate to visit the site in terms of if there are any underlying health conditions or, or anything like that that could increase the risk to members um, in terms of who would be able to attend a visit. Um, that bearing in mind, if, if members are going for a deferral effectively, they're they're saying they're not determining the application for a period of time, assuming that could lead to an appeal on non-determination, we would then have to advise an inspector how we would have determined the application had we have determined it, um, which was similar to the case put before members last week um, for one that was being appealed on non-determination because we have to give a clear steer to the inspector in terms of what we would have done with the application. So. Um, I would encourage members to make a decision on the application rather than deferral um, because that could also help us in the event that we did end up having an appeal on non-determination, but I will leave members to continue the debate. Thank you very much. I've got a number of speakers and then I'll come back to Councillor Revens. Um, so I've got Councillors Hendry, Murphy, Perry, Bolt, and then I'll come back to Councillor Revens. So, uh, Councillor Hendry. Good morning, Mr Chairman again. Um, a couple of things here. This doesn't need a site visit. There's not anything that can't be sorted out here today, right here at this moment in time. Just going back for a second, can, could we have slide number four, I think it is? That's the aerial view of the gardens and, the, and that kind of stuff. Can we put slide four back on? Yeah, it's the one, two, three. That's, yeah, that's the very one. Yes, yeah, right. Okay. Going back to policy D25, okay? The, the word the word that controls everything in there is the word unacceptable. This is it, it depends whose opinion you're going by. Is it the applicant? Is it the objectors? Is it the case officers? Or is it the councillors who are going to look at it? The word unacceptable has to be has to be decided by somebody. And in this case, it actually meets policy D twenty five. I really cannot see a problem. It's not overbearing on anybody else's garden. It's the same height as the two houses behind it. The two houses, well, behind it, whatever the case may be, the two houses behind it have their bedroom windows already overlooking the gardens of the other one. So one balances the other. I would like to put forward a recommendation uh, for the case officer that this is accepted, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. So you're moving permission? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Murphy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I am I am directly opposite to the previous speaker uh, on the basis that a number of people have referred to the impact that this has. I mean, Mrs. De Priest referred to the we decided that the impact was not unacceptable. In other words, she referred to the impact, and there definitely is an impact. There's no question, and the impact was was described by uh, yourself, Mr. Chairman, when you spoke about the impact of the view in slide 12, where you looked at the side of the building, and to my mind, it looks like a barn. And also, when you look at the measurements, which if you do describe them in feet, um, are 26 and a half feet by 16 and a half feet, it is almost the same size. It's just a bit smaller, but is almost doubling this Shally bungalow to create a very big impact on the street scene from the side. They cannot put, they obviously cannot put windows into that side, which would make some form of relief, but they can put it in because it would directly overlook onto the neighbor's properties. So they are stuck with this barn-like construction, which in my opinion, and agreeing with Councillor Bradford, this starts off as a quite a small chalet bungalow, which has been extended already with a dormer. I mean, they're also ex asking you to extend it in the front with the dormers. Again, I see that as perfectly acceptable. But the back bit, looking from the side, the street, the effect on the street scene, I think is quite significant. 
it's like a bomb. And I would be definitely against this. I mean, I would suggest that they might go away and rethink their ideas for a doubling the size to make it a bit slightly smaller would be acceptable for me. But I, I am sorry, but I cannot accept this as a, as a as, it, to me, it's an unacceptable overbearing, especially from the side street scene looks like a barn. I'm sorry, I'm against it. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor Perry. <clears throat> Um, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I would have really liked to have it to be deferred for a site visit, um, as already suggested, um, because you, you've got to see what this is. And, and I'm not convinced. Are the officers happy that this extension, it should be subservient to the main building, surely? And it doesn't look. It looks like it's the identical size um, to the, the main building. Um, bungalow. Can the officer just say that they're happy that it's it's subservient? Because I don't think I am. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Do you want to? Can you address that uh, that question, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I appreciate the members' views in, in terms of subservience. Um, it's not a prerequisite of any piling policy that we have on design. It has to have it has to reflect the characteristics of an existing site um, and the building itself. Uh, subservience helps in some respects when we're dealing with extensions but it's not a qualification that is required of every proposal that we receive and provided that design scale and the impact is is acceptable um, we would consider the the proposal acceptable and uh, hence our recommendation to, to members today thank you chairman thank you councillor perry did you want to come back um yes i i still think there's there's a query on that one um and <laughs> If we can't go and, and have a site visit, then I would recommend that they um, review that uh, application um, for something a little bit smaller um, and less, as you say, less of an impact. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bolt. I'm still, I've got a concern with regards to this being overbearing. Um, there's a question about the respects of the visual or the amenity value of the occupiers of neighbouring properties. And also it does change the character of the area totally. I think that's basically what we've all been saying, or uh, as some of us have been saying. I'd like, if, if possible, um, to recommend that we don't uh, pass this. Um, I'd like to put that one forward uh, because we can't go and see the site. Deferral isn't always the best way. Um, and so in view that there's no site visit, my own view is that we should move not to recommend this at all. So you're moving a refusal? Yes, I am. OK. Um, I'm going to come to come to Councillor Revers. I just want to double check with Mrs Nicholson that I'm right in my understanding at the moment. We've had a proposal for deferral from Councillor Revens, a proposal for granting from Councillor Hendry, and a, and a proposal for refusal from Councillor Bolt, for which obviously we'll, we'll need planning reasons if we come to that. My understanding is, as yet, I haven't had a seconding for any one of those three. Is that correct, Mr Nicholson, as, as things stand? Yes, Chairman, you're correct. That's fine. So. Next on my list, I've got Councillor Revens and then Councillor Grimes, but I've got Mrs. De Vries wanted to uh, comment, I think, at this point. Thank you. I was just going to say, in terms of the street scene, um, Liam, could you show the picture of the property relative to the neighbouring properties as a view taken from the street scene? Lovely. Yeah, so... Um, what members won't get in terms of context from that slide, obviously you can see the side elevation of two and four Meadow Park. Um, you will see the ridge line of the development and the ridge line of the development does go out um, for a certain distance as has been discussed by members. In terms of the extent of the view of that ridge line in terms of the street scene, it would be screened ahead of this point due to the side elevation of two and four Meadow Park and would be screened again due to the um, placement of the neighbouring property just beyond it. So in terms of street scene impact, this this length of the road would give a view of the ridge line, um, but the view of the ridge line because it's at the back of the property and because it would be screened by the neighbouring properties beyond this glimpse, um, officers didn't consider that, that change was was significantly going to alter the character or appearance of the building as as proposed. The Dormer extension members will just see on the edge of the same image. 
um, the neighbouring property has extended the dormer same way as proposed. I think through the debate that hasn't been raised as an issue. So in terms of um, the issues that are coming out of the debate, it seems to be um, size scale potential dominance and potential overlooking for the neighbouring properties. Um, it is on, on the block plan, it does appear to be a sizable footprint, but the eaves line do run at the eaves line of the original property and the ridge line runs at the ridge line of the original property with the gable facing out back. So in terms of the impacts, it would be of the sloped roof and a view of that from um, the neighbouring properties. So um, if if members were looking to move for a deferral, which I'm, I'm strongly encouraging against, um, because I do think there's enough information for members to be able to consider the application before them at the moment. But if there were concerns about the potential impact from the garden of the neighbouring property who's spoken, um, the application could be deferred, I would suggest, for one meeting to allow for the case officers subject to appropriate risk assessments to go out on site to the neighbouring property and take some additional photos from the neighbouring property garden if that would show members the bit of information they feel they are missing. Um, obviously the case officer has been on site to the application site and taken lots of um, photos from the application site showing the site clearly and the neighbouring properties in our opinion clearly enough to, to make a recommendation on the application. But if members feel they need that additional bit of information, um, we could make contact with the adjoining properties, arrange for a site visit for the case officer subject to appropriate risk assessment um, and present the application back before members at the next committee with appropriate photos. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Evans. Uh, yes, I like that suggestion from uh, Miss um, DeVries. I think that was very helpful um i think what we're lacking here is is clarity on that e the impact of that east ele elevation on the neighboring properties of two and four meadow park um that probably will give us that satisfaction as to whether or not there is an acceptable uh, loss of privacy and overlooking and overbearing and visual dominance and loss of light in policy d25 it may not um, but I think it's the best way forward at this point to be able to assess this application. Um, clearly, it would be more helpful if there was there could perhaps be an undertaking by the applicant not to not to do us for non determination on this. But that's uh, that's probably uh, probably wishing for wishing for too much. Um, you know, we're, we're we're in a difficulty that we can't comply with one element of law and we can't comply with another element of law and that's not a not a nice position to be in so i think um i think a deferral gives us a way to find uh, to find uh, whether whether we we can deem this acceptable or not acceptable without a site visit so that's why i would i would i would urge members to support it please okay so just to confirm your your recommendation is a a deferral for an officer site visit to get further information and that will obviously be the timing of that will be based on when when officers are are able to get out there safely subject to risk assessments and such yes that's correct um, we should be able to do that i would would have thought within within a month maybe obviously we're on bizarre cycles at the moment of <laughs> meeting every week or every fortnight so um the, the, the word cycle doesn't help but um I, I would anticipate that within four weeks we should be able to complete a risk assessment and enable a site visit estate agents are allowed are allowed to to, to show people around houses at the moment i think um I think there may there should be risk assessments available that would that would allow a planning officer to to, to visit someone's garden. Thank you, Mrs. De Vries. Yeah, it was just to confirm that um, I think effectively as of last week, um, case officers are able to go out on site where it is considered essential, and we can't otherwise assess the application. Um, the only matters we'd need to look at is obviously um, getting contact details for the adjoining property. Um, if they can contact the case officer Liam Evans and there is a risk assessment that you will have to undertake and there are limitations in terms of um, contact obviously for the site visit but we we would hope to be able to arrange that and have it before members for the next meeting. Okay, uh, Councillor Grimes. Thank you Chairman. Uh, strangely enough um, 
this is the freeze answer, the, the questions that I was going to pose. Um, so I have nothing else to say at this stage. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think the street scene is uh, improved 100% by this design, actually. Uh, it, um, I think it's a, a lovely design and um, and house that, that, that potentially could be built. Uh, I would like to second um, Councillor Revens' proposal, if I'm not, if that's okay, if I'm not, or if it's not already been done. Uh, it hasn't, so no, that's fine, that's, that's seconded. Uh, Councillor Granter. Yes, thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> I was going to second uh, Councillor Hendry's proposal and acceptance of the, uh, this proposal. Um, the properties in question that overlooking is nearly 10 metres away, and I, I do trust the judgments of our officers on this one that, that does comply with D25, and everything goes as this is why they voted for acceptance on this one. So I, I would like to second Councillor Henry's uh, proposal, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've got Councillor Bradford. Yes, Mr Chairman. Before all this debate, I was going to second, second uh, Councillor Bolt for refusal. But now we've brought this bit of a, cloud, a, bit of a um, cloudy way, way in, 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 into, a, into a site visit by the officer, then... Uh, I'm, I'm looking at it a little bit different, so really, I'm not. I'm going to withdraw that. The uh, seconder for refusing it, but, but bear in mind it's a bungalow and a bungalow, an extended well, on bungalow. Yeah. All, all I would say to, to members, obviously, we've we've got a couple of proposals that have been seconded now, so we will be taking the site with it first. If if members feel that they have adequate information in front of them to make a resolution, then they make the decision accordingly, and then we'll take proposals in turn in terms of what the other alternatives are. Councillor Perry. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, no, I prefer to for it to be deferred so that we can get a full um, viewpoint from the neighbours, um, as it were. Um, so I would like to also recommend a deferral until that's all, all in so we can make a decision. Thank you. OK, Councillor Bolt. Yes, thank you. With regards to the fact that we're going to go for a deferral, um, or a potential for a deferral, for photographs to be taken of from the back garden, would it also be possible to get photographs at the same time from the uh, inward roadside? I'm just going back to my plan here of looking into this extension. I'm, I'm concerned about the street scene as well. Um, with regards to that, and uh, what time scale are we putting on getting all this back in front of us? I, I think I'll come to Mrs. Debris, she can uh, fill in on the time scale and, and the issues. Thank you. Um, in terms of Inward Road, um, it is heavily landscaped to the back of this property, so we can provide a photo, but the photo will show a very um, I think Liam's getting it up for members now. It's it's a high level of landscaping, so it's not actually able to see the house from the inward road um, sort of position. So that's why that image wasn't shown. It was um, mentioned in the report, but that is the current boundary treatment to inward road. Um, in terms of timeframes, um, it will either be um, the next meeting, which is in a fortnight's time, or the following meeting, depending on when the visit can be arranged and deadlines for the updated report. Councillor Bolt? It is yeah, the, the idea of, of, of the photographs from um, Inwood Road was to show the street scene as such, um, because that has been commented by a, a couple of members. Um, so long as we're, we're not going to dig ourselves into having the decision taken away from us, then I, 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 I would withdraw my proposal. Okay. Uh, Mrs Nicholson. Thank you, Chairman. I was just going to say, um, unless it's done by the end of this week, it's going to be unable to go to the 23rd of June. So it'll probably be, won't be until a July meet, one of the July meetings. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, just to confirm, Councillor Evans, the the intention of the of the deferral, because uh, we need to have have the reason, is is because in effect that there is a concern that we have insufficient. Um, 
evidence of the potential impact on the on the neighbouring dwellings. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, policy D25, the impact of loss of privacy and, over, and overlooking overbearing and visual dominance and loss of light are the issues that I want the site visit to confirm um, what the situation is with the neighbouring properties of number two and number four uh, Meadow Park. Thank you. Okay. Right, members, we have a, a proposal that's been made for uh, the, the site visit on that on that basis, which has been seconded. Um, obviously, if as as is normal, what we'll do is we'll take the the site visit vote first. If members feel that they're in a position, obviously, to make the decision today, then they can decide not to support the site visit. If they feel that they are not in that position, then obviously they support the site visit. Should the site visit be passed, that's obviously the resolution. If the site visit falls. Then we move to the next resolution, which we have uh, validly proposed and seconded, which is to to grant permission. Um, and then we would have to vote on that one and take the vote accordingly. So just so everyone is, is clear, there is a process here of we deal with the site visit first. That's then resolved. And depending on how that is resolved, we then move on from there. Mr. Yes, Councillor Evans. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can I just just clarify? It's a deferral for an officer site visit, um, not for a, not for a site visit. Absolutely. Uh, just uh, uh, yeah, just just so there's no confusion. No, as, that's helpful. As, as to to what you what you've outlined. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Councillor Evans. That is that is that's helpful. Right, members. So we'll move to the the vote on the on the site visit. So if if you wish to have the site visit for the officers to go out and, and get that information to feedback for us. Obviously you vote for or against if you don't wish to do that. So we'll start with, let's go with Councillor Murphy to start with. I am I have seen and heard the presentation and I'm for. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Revens. I've seen and heard the presentation and the debate and I am for the deferral. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have heard and seen all the debate and given a lot of thought, and I'm for deferral. Thank you. Councillor Bolt. Uh, present throughout the whole application, heard all of the debate for the deferral. Thank you. Councillor Perry. Yes, I've seen and heard uh, the full debate, and I am for uh, a site visit by the officer. Thank you. Councillor Grimes. Thank you, Chairman. I've seen and heard uh, the debate, and I'm for the site visit. Thank you. Councillor Granter? Yes, thank you, Chairman. I've seen and heard all the debate, but I'm against the site uh, visit. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Glassford? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I've seen and heard the debate, and I'm for a site visit. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pearce? Thank you, Chairman. I've seen and heard the whole debate, and I'm against the site visits. Thank you. Councillor Gibson? Uh, I've seen and heard the whole debate and application, and I'm for the site visit. Thank you. Councillor Hendry? I've seen and heard everything, uh, Mr Chairman, and I'm against the, the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and likewise, I've heard the debate, uh, and I'm also against the proposal for a site visit deferral. Is there any other members, Mrs Nicholson, that we haven't covered? No, Chairman, that's it. If you could then just give us the uh, the votes total, please. So that's for um, an officer site visit. There's eight for that one. Um, for, a, for against, sorry. That makes you 12. So, shall I just confirm that again? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Chairman, I can confirm that's correct. Thank you. So, that was eight for the site visit, four against, and two obviously were out of room because they declared interest. Correct. Excellent. So, that is clearly carried. So, that is, is deferred for an officer site visit to report back to a future meeting with that extra information. I'm going to suggest at that point, members, that we take a short comfort break, if everyone is, is okay with that. Um, we will restart at, well, we'll give it five minutes. We'll restart at uh, 16 minutes past 11. Thank you all very much.
Right, thank you, everybody. We'll uh, we'll restart the meeting. Uh, if I can just have a quick uh, go around the members to make sure that everyone has uh, has returned. Um, Councillor Murphy, are you present? Yes, Chairman, I'm present. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Kingham. Yes, Chairman, present. Councillor Bradford. Yes, Mr. Chairman, present and correct. Mm -hmm. Councillor Bolt. Yes, uh, present. Councillor Perry. Yes, present. Councillor Grimes. Yes, Chairman, present. Thank you. Councillor Hendry. Is Councillor Hendry with us? Okay, we'll come back. Councillor Gibson. Yeah, here, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pierce. Councillor Pierce. Okay, Councillor Glassford. Councillor Glassford. Present, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Granter. Is Councillor Granter present? Chairman, I think they're on pause at the moment, so I don't think they're quite back. Oh, Councillor Granter might be back now. One here, present and correct. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Granter. Um, so that brings us back to Councillor Scott. Is Councillor Liz Scott back in the room? Not yet. And Councillor Hendry? Councillor Scott is just making her way in. Ah, looks like Councillor Hendry is just joining us as well. Councillor oh, Hendry, yeah. are, you, are you back? Okay, I'm yep, here, Mr yep. Chairman. I'm sorry I took so long. I'm here. That's okay. And Councillor Scott, can you just confirm you're present and can hear, hear us? Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, I can. I can hear you. And can you hear me? Yeah. We can. Thank you. And thank Councillor you. Pierce. I'm not seeing anything from Councillor Pierce at the moment. Just bear with us one minute. See if are we able to try and make ah Councillor Pierce, are you back with us? Yes, sorry, Chairman. I didn't realise I was late. Sorry. That's okay. No problem. So that was, uh, and and also I'm I'm here and and have heard all the responses from from members. So uh, everyone appears to be back and present. So if we move to our next application that we have uh, today, which is the application on page 26, uh, we're still within Wembden, uh, this time Church Road. And Miss Parsons, I think you're introducing this one for us, please. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Can you confirm that you can see a PowerPoint presentation? Yes, we've got Good. that on the screen now. Good. Start from the beginning. So this uh, this is an application for outline consent for the erection of two dwellings. It's um, within the grounds of 53 Church Road, Wemden. The site is um, located quite close to my previous application from this morning. The outline in red is the application site area. Outlined in blue is land additional land controlled or owned by the applicant. So you can see in terms of the location, it's on the corner of Church Road and Blakes Road, with the church, St George's Church, being here to the east. Um, these figures will relate to density details that I'll cover a little bit later on. Um, this is an aerial, really, to show the context of the site within, uh, within the village and another um, block plan to show the extent of the site. Now, outline consent was granted on this site in 2019 for one dwelling. This is an outline application with all matters reserved for two dwellings. Uh, this is an illustrative layout to seek to demonstrate that two d detached dwellings can be accommodated on the site. It does show two parking spaces per dwelling. Um, and it leaves three spaces for the host dwelling at number 53. The visibility display at the new access 
is shown here. The dimensions here are 2.4 meters back by 17 meters. Um, and during the processing of the previous application that was withdrawn, the previous application was for three dwellings, and that was withdrawn earlier this year in February. During the negotiations and discussions with that one, the Highways Authority confirmed that a visibility display of 17 meters would be satisfactory in this location due to the highway network and the speed of traffic in that area. As I said, the application is for um, outline consent for two dwellings, but all matters are reserved for subsequent approval. And so the applicant has shown a layout, an illustrative layout, and the applicant has also shown an illustrative floor plan or floor plans of the dwellings, and these plans show the properties to be three bedrooms. And now I'm going to show you some photographs of the site. This is um, I'm located in the parish centre car park in front of the church. This is the parish centre here, and this is the host dwelling here. Now, the existing access to that dwelling is located on this side of um, the photograph, as you can see, and the proposed site is actually beyond, beyond this area. And that's looking at that fence and wall line from the road, looking straight in towards the conservatory of the host dwelling. And so the site is beyond this fence panel, but there will be some use of this access to provide access and visibility. And then the site is beyond this fence panel and is within this area. And again, another view. Um, since I undertook the site visit several months ago. The, um, I understand the hedge. Some of the walling has been removed, and the site is in here. These are the properties that you can see on the north of Blake's Road. So that they they would be the ones that we were looking at earlier. Just another view as I'm going around that lane now, just so that you can see the context. This is looking back down towards the church centre car park and the corner of the site, and again, the corner of the site from Blakes Road. And then this is the extent of the edge of the site, and this is the existing dwelling, which is currently sited up here on the west of the site. Now I'm going to go back to the layout. Now, in terms of the principle of residential development, the site is within settlement boundary. Um, uh, outline consent has already been granted for one dwelling, and therefore it's considered the principle is acceptable. Um, we have had um, an update in terms of further representations I need to, to present to you. The parish centre have written in. They object to the application. They're concerned about additional traffic being created. They state that the development does not leave adequate space for three cars to park for the host dwelling at number 53. They point out that there's no room available for builders to park their vehicles. And the car park opposite the site is privately owned and is used for the parish centre and the church. And they do not want large vehicles reversing into that area. Um, so we talked about the principle of the development. Residential development's already been established, and this is an application for two dwellings. So the applicant needs to demonstrate to us that the site is large enough to accommodate two dwellings, satisfactorily having enough garden, parking, um, visibility. Now, the parish council have raised an issue in terms of density, and they've referred to the neighborhood plan that um, the neighborhood plan states that there should be an appropriate um, density that, that meets the character of the area. Now, I've measured a couple, just a couple of the other garden areas within proximity to this site. This site area is for two dwellings, but as shown, would amount to approximately 580 square meters. A couple of the other properties up here amount to 250. Uh, this one, 276. Not measured this one, but it's clearly 
a little bit smaller. And so in terms of the density of the site and the appropriateness in this location, it's considered comparable to other properties in the area. Um, the application, again, as I said, is outline all matters reserved. And so impact on neighboring residents, um, that, that can't clearly be, de be demonstrated at this stage because the layout will be illustrative. But I believe the layout does demonstrate that the site can accommodate two dwellings appropriately so as there would be no undue overlooking, loss of um, privacy, or loss of um, sunlight to any adjacent properties that are already at the site. In terms of highway safety, the site um, can accommodate adequate parking for the proposed two dwellings. The site, the church road is not um, a classified road and therefore no turning off road is necessary. However, this illustrative drawing does show turning area for vehicles together with two spaces for each of the two properties. It also shows um, that there would remain three spaces for the host dwelling. Um, in terms of visibility, as I referred to earlier, that it's considered that due to the um, width of Church Road, the bend in the road further to the north, the speed of traffic would not be running at 30 miles an hour um, and therefore a judgment can be made in terms of the reduction in the visibility at the site. Normally, within a 30 mile an hour zone, the, per the ideal visibility would be 43 meters in either direction. In this situation, we've got 17 meters, which while the highway authority refer us to look at their standing advice on this application, previously they have confirmed that 17 meters is adequate in this location. But having said that, the actual position of this access is not to be reproved at this stage because it's indicative only. But the applicant, as I said, needs to demonstrate that the, the site can be developed. Um, just check if there's anything else I need to cover. So therefore, the the principle of the development is acceptable. It's already been established for one dwelling. The site um, illustrative layout does demonstrate that it's large enough to accommodate two dwellings together with private amenity space, parking and adequate visibility. It's not considered that the density would be out of character with the area and that the site could be developed without undue adverse impact on any neighbouring properties. And therefore, Chairman, the recommendation is to grant consent. Thank you very much. Again, you'll see we have a, a speaker on this application, in this case, uh, Peter Major, who is speaking on behalf of the Parish Council. So, Mrs Nicholson, if you could enable the speaker's microphone. And if I could ask Mr Major if you'd just like to confirm that the microphone is working. Good morning, Mr Chairman. Yes, can you hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. So, again, just to remind you, you've got the three minutes and you'll hear the bell when there is one minute of that time left to go. So, start when you're ready, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman, Councillors and Officers. Um, I chair Wemden Parish Council's Planning Committee and I don't intend to take up too much of your time this morning. Um, Wemden Parish Council's objection to this application is based, as you've heard, on Neighbourhood Plan Policy WB1, which states that a new development should have a density which reflects the surrounding built form. Um, you will note that we actually supported the earlier outline planning application for the single dwelling on this site, so we're not against development, provided as it falls within the policy guidelines. There are 17 adjoining residential plots shown on the block plan. By my calculation, their average size is about 440 square metres. The average plot size for these proposed houses is 290 square metres, much smaller than those surrounding them. Um, so we believe that this is contrary to the requirement of policy WB1 and that the application should be rejected. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Members, any comments or questions, please? I, I think I've got a comment from Councillor Bolt. Yes, it's regarding the um, the speed limits. It's a 20 area right the way through there. Um, just to 
uh, to clarify that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kingham, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just a couple of questions from Mrs Parsons. Um, access to number 53, is that an existing entrance or will that be part of the new development? And the other item was on the agenda, it mentions a flood risk assessment. Is that, is that or a statement, has that been completed? Because obviously that's an area which does flood, I believe. Ms Parsons? Thank you, Chairman. The um, to find my point, sir. Um, the it, there's an existing access here at present, and there's also another access here. So this access would remain for the propose the existing dwelling. If I show you, this is an illustrative layout. So they have shown it there because that's the optimum point, so that they can get the the most visibility for the development. The uh, the access here would remain for number 53. Um, and so, but this is illustrative, but it shows there would be a separate access for that development. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I would have to refer back to the, um, in terms of the flood risk question, I'll have to refer back to the um, papers on our system. So can you bear with me on that one, please? Certainly, no problem. You might want to carry on with your meeting. I think the only problem will be, <laughs> Ms. Parsons, that the questions will probably be coming in for yourself. So uh, right. I'll, don't worry, we'll we'll let you. Uh, it, it, it's fine just to look it up. Don't worry. Yeah, I didn't mean to stop the meeting. That's right, Councillor King. I mean, it's, I mean, obviously we need to get the uh, Ms. Parsons the opportunity to get the the detailed response to your question. And then I've got, after that, I, will, I have got Councillor Perry indicating to speak, so I'll come to Councillor Perry in a moment. And obviously, if there are any other members who've got questions or comments, if they want to put themselves in the uh, in the chat area, then I'll come to them, obviously, in due course. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. I've got you on the list. Sorry, Councillor King, and what did you want to know about the flood risk assessment? I've got to go back into accolade system. Sorry. Councillor King? Yes. yes, it did mention um, support and information, a planned statement, and yes. flood risk assessment would be provided. I'm not sure. That's been provided, but what did you want to know about it? I mean, say this is an area which I do, I believe, does flood, so I wonder what, whether they'd actually put in any precautions we've for that. We received a flood risk assessment with the application. Okay. Can I yeah. can I come back on a couple yeah. of points? Yes. Yeah. This is Thank you. Uh, apologies for butting in. Um, in terms of the just going on to the visibility spray for a minute, it's 20 miles an hour as um, mentioned by one of the members. So, in terms of visibility spray requirements, the maximum requirement is 22 meters, not 43, as previously mentioned. But um, as mentioned, the spray provided for this site does fall below 22, but because it's a fairly narrow um, uh, access road and, and quite close to a bend in the road, the actual vehicle speeds are a little bit lower. So previously, county highways have accepted that the visibility displays um, provided for this site is appropriate. Um, in terms of flood risk, where it's located inside the settlement boundary, it passes the sequential test, so it doesn't have to do a district-wide search for whether it's appropriate for development or not, because it's inside the settlement boundary, so therefore considered to be appropriate in principle. Um, the second part of the flood risk assessment is how they actually construct the dwellings and what measures they put in while they're constructing the dwellings. This application doesn't go into that detail because it's only an outline application. So effectively, it's the red outline of the site saying, 
we want to put two dwellings in this location in principle can we you know the layout that's been before members showing two detached units with parking spaces isn't necessarily the layout that would come forward it could be semi-detached units um yeah so so that one in terms of the scale of development you know it's shown as two detached units with two pit um, two parking spaces, but that's not set at this stage. Um, the footprints of the units could be smaller, they could be semi-detached and not detached. The, the question is just, in principle, this red outline of a site, can we in any way, shape or form fit two units in there? In terms of flood risk, sequentially it's passed because it's in the settlement boundary. So in principle, the answer is yes, subject to the detail which would come on the later application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor King, does that uh, address your question? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thanks, Chairman. That's terrific. I've got a number of speakers who've now indicated, so we'll we'll come to them in turn. But it's Councillors Perry, Gibson, Bradford, Granta, and Bolt. So, uh, Councillor Perry. Yes, thank you. Um, how close to the boundary is one of the proposed developments? It looks uh, fairly close to um, one of the neighbours in number in Blake's Blake's Road. Um, if you could just, I know it's just a proposal, but it, uh, it, it looks like it's fairly close. Yeah, I think I think the only thing, again, Councillor Perry, the, as, as Mr. Bree said, in effect, what the off, what, what the applicant is doing is showing that they could fit two dwellings on here. They may need to be in a different location to what is shown on those indicative plans, but they're purely indicative. It's just a question of could you fit two two dwellings on. So the the proximity is something we at this stage can't take into account if they got outline permission obviously they would have to come back for reserve matters and at that point if dwellings were too close to boundaries and affecting neighbours that would have to be dealt with at, at that stage okay thank you very much yes thank you okay councillor gibson hello yeah thank you yeah um councillor perry asked a few of my uh, my points really so the the 580 uh, square meters is that the footprint with the whole area, or is that is that for is that for the whole site? Does that include the building footprint? Um, and will there be a loss of trees around? Um, I know the permission's been given, outlined sort of uh, for something to go here. It, to me, it just looks jammed in, uh, especially that one uh, that one house to the left on the screen. I know uh, it just looks jammed in. For two houses maybe though they sh there should be two smaller houses on that area uh but from from what i what i've seen it looks looks jammed in thank Ms. you Parsons, can you uh comment on that thank you um in terms of the greenery this is um an aerial and so all of this or a lot of this has already gone a lot of the scrubby hedge here um and since my photographs, I know a lot of the hedge has been, or the trees have been removed. Um, and then there's a wall under here as well. So I think the only main substantial tree would have been this fir. I don't know if that's still there. The, the view has been made in terms of the recommendation is that there isn't anything significant on the site that needs to be um, retained in terms of amenity that, that could be of any value. Um, if I go to the, the measurements, um, this whole area outlined in red is what's been measured to be approximately 580 square meters. These, these, these areas here are approximately 250 square meters. Just one moment. We haven't we haven't quite caught up with your oh, um, sorry. your slides. It's we're on slide five at the moment, so it's working. Oh, I should have said. I keep forgetting the numbers. Sorry. Are you on slide one yet? Not yet. We're down to three. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Bit slow. Do you have a layout yet? At the moment, we're on slide three, which is showing the red line around the site with the neighbouring okay. in blue. So the red line um, includes the entire site, includes the access, the parking, the turning, the gardens and the dwellings. And then the measurements that I have made of the um, other property gardens or of the entire garden, including their parking and garaging. Have you got the layout yet? We're now on slide one. 
good. So, so yeah, just to repeat, the, that figure there is an approximate measurement I have made of this land within the red line. And these are measurements I have made of the entire garden areas. Clearly, some plots have larger gardens. Some have smaller, smaller, very long gardens. Um, the view is that it's not so small as to be out of character with the area. Thank you. Thank you. I've got Mrs. DeVries. Yes, thank you. Um, it was just to say as well, the application was subject to consultation with the landscape officer who raised no objection. But as this is an outline application with all matters reserved, we don't have a landscape scheme for the future development, but any approval of reserve matters um, if outline gets consented, would have to include the landscape details. So we would have some control on the second application in terms of how we mitigate any loss of existing planting. Thank you. Councillor Bradford. Second, Mr Chairman. Are you a bit of mention about the floodplain? Not so many yards away. I think there's a cricket pitch in Wendon, in Wendon Community Hall. Um, with loud, loud and a bit of a plateau there, so I wouldn't have much problem with floods, etc. But I'm a bit confused about square meters. Once again, we get the one of these neighbourhood plans coming into conflict. We have the chairman of the planning committee saying 400 square meters, and our own planning officer saying 200 square meters. So I'm a little bit confused again. I seem to get confused easy these days. But figures, figures are getting like that. I fancy everything's down to square this and square that, and and these neighbourhood plans. There's always going to be conflict between neighbourhood plan and what our own officer said. It's always going to be that sort of thing, I think. But uh, but a lot, a lot of it's down to this end product, which is when you know what well, that that's that's the seal payments and all the rest of it. And sometimes you need to take a good long look at some of these things. Sometimes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bradford. I, I think in terms of the square metres, and I'll, I'll check with Ms. Parsons as well. I think the speaker was was highlighting what he had done an, an average of. The properties in the area and that's what came out at the 400 and the plan you've just seen from Miss Parsons was showing that there are there are a number of properties that have sizes smaller than that but but the speaker was saying the average if you take them all together is around that 400 odd square meters is, is that as you understood it Miss Parsons I believe so yes I mean it's a matter of judgment um, in terms of whether you think two on this site would be out of character with the area. Officers consider that as the illustrative layout shows two dwellings, does show adequate garden, it does show a visibility can be formed, it also shows parking, it also shows turning area, and in this area you don't need to have a turning area, but it would be beneficial. And so um, adding all of that up together, I think it's the officer's view is that it's ample size for two dwellings. An application of common sense, so Mr. Chairman. I haven't used it too much recently. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I've got five speakers left to go. I've got Councillors Granter, Bolt, Grimes, Revens, and Scott. So if we start with Councillor Granter. Oh, can, can I start, hold on for one minute, Councillor Granter? Uh, there, there appears to be a fairly urgent Ms. Mrs. Nicholson. <laughs> Apologies, Chairman. Um, it's, I've just had a message from um, one of the members of. Uh, the office staff, the direct access that we use is uh, being rebooted as we speak by the sounds of it because everything seems to have gone off. Um, so there may be an interruption, but we'll take it as we go along. Hopefully we should be okay, but just in case we disappear. Okay, obviously if that happens, we'll, we'll take an adjournment and, and carry on when we can get back, but we'll keep fingers crossed. So Councillor Grant. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, obviously the principle of of development has has been agreed. We we had a in two thousand and nineteen, I had permission for for one dwelling. Uh, now we're looking for outline permission instead of one having the two. So that is the decision that we have to come to today. Um, in the officer's opinion, there is enough room for for two dwellings on this site. So, seeing this is only um, outline permission, um, I would like to put forward the officer's recommendation on this one, please. Thank you. Thank you. So, just confirm you're proposing that to grant permission in line with the officer's recommendation. 
I am, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Bolt. Uh, just as a, 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 a clarification, this is outline. When it comes down to the detail planning, it, with it, when it comes down to um, the, the building plan, to allay the fears of the community centre, will they be able to restrict the builders from using that car park? Um, that, that's the, the main thing. Can they control that with a building plan? Uh, Miss Parsons or Mrs DeVries, who wants to address that? Thank you, Chairman. I, I would say that's sort of out of the control of the planning. Um, we wouldn't be able to control how they can conducted their building work and it's a matter between the parish centre and the applicants. Thank you. Um, I can just add to that in terms of if it's third party land obviously it'd be um, trespass if if the builders don't have the agreement of the um, owners of the car park. Um, larger developments if they are considered to cause a problem can be subject to a construction management plan so we'd have details of where they're parking and how they're managing their construction staff. Um, it would be unusual to do it for two units, but if it became a problem um, during the second application, we could always consider it at that stage. Councillor Bolt. Yeah, thank you. OK, Councillor Grimes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, it seems to come down to a matter of, of opinion, really, on plot sizes. You can measure some small ones, you can measure some large ones. I don't have a problem with this. I think you can get two within this and as uh, it's already outlined for one um, three was withdrawn I think two is is right and I'm happy to second the recommendation thank you thank you councillor Revens uh, councillor Grimes has beaten me to the draw on seconding the, um, re the proposal um, this comes down to neighbourhood plan WB1 policy it says use of appropriate densities to reflect the surrounding built form. It's clearly appropriate um, to have a, a, a density of this size because there are other other properties within the area of, of a similar size. The, the, the figure quoted by the by Councillor Major was around an average and it doesn't say below average. It says appropriate and and the, this plot size is clearly appropriate for two for two properties. So I'll be supporting the officer recommendation. Thank you very much. Councillor Scott. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I would agree that it's an appropriate size for two um, dwellings. Um, with concerns of the neighbours, I wonder if there would be any um, times of operation. I noticed that wasn't included, but whether that should be included now or whether that's included later in that, you know, they don't start too early and go on too late. Thank you. I think, again, potentially that would come at reserve matters, but Mrs. Ms. Parsons? Um, well, we did consult the environmental health officer and they've not raised it as an issue and it's a relatively small development compared to a lot of others. But, um, I mean, certainly we, we can deal with that at a later matter or now, but um, it is close to other residential properties. Thank you very much. Can I come back, Chairman? Yes, Councillor Scott. Um, I'd just like to say, because it is close to other residential properties, that's why it needs to be restricted. Thank you. The times of operation. Understood. Uh, Mrs DeVries. Thank you. Um, it, it is unusual to restrict it for two units. Um, it's more usual for, for sort of five to ten units going upwards in terms of because the um, scale of impact and, and level, level and length of time of impact is, is that much greater for larger sites than smaller sites. Um, in terms of layout, as that's not set, we don't actually know where the building is going relative to the neighbours. So it's not clear from the outline planning permission at this moment in terms of what the potential direct impact could be. I would suggest at outline stage it's excessive to impose the condition at the moment. Um, but if through approval of reserve matters we do get a footprint that's relatively close to the neighbour, we can revisit that in consultation with environmental health on a later application. OK, thank you very much. Any further comments or questions from members? If not, I'm not seeing anything on the, on the chat at the moment. So uh, we have a proposal 
to grant permission from Councillor Grant, seconded by Councillor Grimes. So again, I'll come to members in turn, asking you to confirm that you've been present throughout the, the debate and the presentation and what your vote is in terms of either being for or against the proposition. So if we start this time with uh, Councillor Hendry. I've seen and heard everything, Mr Chairman, and uh, yes, I'm quite happy to go with this. Don't have any problem at all. Thank you. Did you hear me okay, Mr. Chairman? Just wanted to confirm that you are you are just confirming that you're yeah. you were for the recommendation. My screen went a bit funny there. I'm really sorry. Yes, I yes, I'm for the recommendation, no problem at all. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much. Uh Councillor Scott. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I can confirm that I've seen and heard all of the debate and I'm in favour of the uh to agree um planning permission. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gibson. Hello, yeah, I heard an, uh, with the entire application and uh, yeah, I'm for, I'm for to grant permission. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Chairman. I confirm I've seen and heard the whole presentation and I am in favour for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Glassford. Thank you, Chairman. I've seen and heard the presentation and I am for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Granter. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I can confirm that I've heard and seen all the debate, and I am for the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Grimes. Councillor Grimes. Sorry, it went the wrong way. <laughs> uh, yes, I confirm I've seen and heard the whole presentation, and I'm for. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Uh, yes, I confirm I've seen and heard all the presentation, and I am for. Thank you. Councillor Bolt. I was present throughout the whole application, heard all of the debate, and for. Thank you, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I've heard, I heard the whole debate, and I'm supporting the officer. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Kingham. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've um, heard all the, the debate, and I'm for the application. Thank you, Councillor Revens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have heard and seen the presentation and the debate, and my vote is in favour of the proposition. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Murphy? Thank you, Chairman. I have seen and heard all of the debate, and I am for the recommendation. Thank you. And likewise, myself, I've seen and heard the whole debate, uh, and I'm also for the proposals. Uh, so, Mrs. Nicholson, I think that's all members. If you could give us the, uh, confirm the vote. Uh, I think that's unanimous of 14. Sorry, I was multitasking. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, that's what I've got down as well. So that is clearly carried. So permission is, is granted. Right, members, that uh, brings us to the end of, of this morning's uh, applications. Uh, we will obviously restart again this afternoon at, uh, at 2.30 with the agenda for this afternoon. So thank you all very much for your participation this morning and we'll close the, uh, the, close the meeting. Thank you. All members of the committee should have their video on, but will remain muted until the chairman invites them to speak. All members of the press and public will remain muted unless they have registered to speak, and the chairman will let them know when they can make their representation. The format of the meeting will be as per the agenda published and a copy of the officer presentations can be found on the committee web page. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, can I also welcome everyone to the uh, this afternoon's meeting uh, of the Development Committee. I'm Councillor Phil, the Chairman of the Committee. Uh, again, just a few housekeeping notes to how we'll be operating the committee this afternoon. Uh, each application will be taken in turn with the officers outlining the application followed by a public speaking time. Members will then debate and then decide the applications. For members of the committee, just a reminder that if you wish to speak, please indicate through the uh, chat and I will call you in turn. During the debate, uh, we will have a proposer and a seconder for a resolution. Members will then vote on this proposal in turn, confirming that they've been present throughout the application being considered 
and they will vote either for, against or abstain on the proposal. The votes will then be counted and the result announced. I'll now ask the officers and councillors who will be taking part in this meeting this afternoon to confirm that they can see and hear me and to introduce themselves. So if we start with the planning officers, uh, Mrs De Vries. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Dawn De Vries. I'm the Principal Planning Officer for the West. Um, so I'm presenting an application this afternoon. Thank you. Mr Noon. Yes, hello there. Uh, my name is Adrian Noon. I'm the Principal Planning Officer for the East uh, and I, I'm here in support of the officers who are presenting today. Thank you. Thank you. Mr Titchener. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Yeah, I'm, my name is Dean Titchener, Senior Planning Officer in the East team and I can hear and see everything. Thank you. Uh, from our legal team, Mrs Lehman. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Dawn Lehman. I am the legal advisor to the committee and I can confirm that I can hear and see you. Thank you. Uh, from our Democratic Services, Mrs Nicholson. Good afternoon, Chairman. My name is Leila Nicholson. I'm the committee manager and I can confirm that I can see and hear you. Thank you. And if we come to then the members of the committee and we'll take them in turn, uh, Councillor Granta. Yes, good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, um, my name is Councillor Graham Granta. I represent the Fairfax Ward here in Bridgewater, and everybody's coming along long, loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you. Is Councillor Glassford present? Okay, we'll come Not back yet, to Councillor. Not yet, Chairman. We're um, trying to find him. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pearce. Um, thank you, Chairman. It's Councillor Cathy Pearce here, Westover Ward in Bridgewater, and I confirm that I can see and hear you. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Hello, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, Councillor Lee Gibson from Eastover in Bridgewater, and I can see and hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Yes, thank you, Chairman. It's Councillor Liz Scott here from the Axvale Ward near Axbridge, and I can confirm I can see and hear everything. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hendry. Sedgemore District Councillor Alistair Hendry from Burnham on Sea Central. I can see and hear everything. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I represent the Burnham North Ward and I can see and hear everything. Thank you, Councillor Revens. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Councillor Bill Revens. I represent the North Petherton Ward and I can confirm that I can see and hear everything. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kingham. Yeah, good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, I'm Stuart Kingham. I'm the ward member for West Poldens, and I can hear and see all. Councillor Bradford. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Alan Bradford representing North Pedder, and I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Councillor Bolt. Brian Bolt, ward councillor for Cannington and Wembden. Uh, I can see and hear everything. Councillor Perry. Yes, good afternoon. Yeah, it's, I'm Councillor Liz Perry representing the King's Isle Ward and I can confirm I can hear and see you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Grimes. Good afternoon, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Tony Grimes, Deputy Chairman, uh, representing Barrow. I can see and hear all the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, myself, um, Councillor Filmer, and, and, and I've heard and seen all the comments coming back from members and officers. If we uh, uh, would just also mention that obviously we have members of the public uh, present with us this afternoon. Uh, some are here as, as observers, others have registered to speak, and we also have uh, members. We also have members of the council and also officers from the council who are here to observe uh, the meeting, and that includes today our, the, our portfolio holder for development. If we if we move then on to our Actually, I think we've just been joined by Councillor Glassford. So, Councillor Glassford, can you just confirm that you are present and can hear the meeting? Yes, sir. Yes, I can. Terrific. Thank you very much. So, if we move on to the, the agenda itself, then, please. Uh, and the first item is apologies for absence. Mrs Nicholson, do we have any apologies for this afternoon? Thank you, Chairman. I've received apologies from Councillor Facey. Thank you. And all other members have... have Richard is present. Uh, item two is urgent business. There, There is no business I'm advised of that is not already covered on our agenda. Item three is public speaking time. For members of the public, for those of you who've uh, registered to speak this afternoon, 
the process we'll follow is we'll take the applications in turn. Uh, the officers will give us the outline and the background to the applications and present uh, them to us. We'll then ask the speakers to address the committee. Uh, what I'll actually do is, is get Mrs. Nicholson to enable uh, your microphone uh, so that you are able to address us. And if you can just confirm when that is done that, that we can make sure we can hear you. Uh, I would just let, remind you that you have three minutes to address the committee. Um, there will be a, a bell that will be sounded when there is one minute to go. So you still have a minute left when the bell goes. And Mrs. Nicholson, just for a demonstration so the speakers know what to expect, could you just ring the bell? Thank you very much. Expertly done. Um, if we so that will then signal, as I say, um, one minute left to go. And then when you get to the end of the three minutes, I will have to call time on on you if you haven't finished by then. Item four is declarations of interest. Uh, are there any decorations that members have for this afternoon? I'm not seeing anything in the chat, so I will. Uh, there is a declaration that I need to make, which is on the application on page 33. Um, the application in Chapel Allison falls within my county division, uh, but I've taken no part in any discussions at the parish council level on this application, so I'm not predetermined. Uh, for, for members of the public, it's important if, if there are any decorations that members have of, of any interest that they make them publicly, and so you're aware of any background they may have on an application. There has only been, I will pause at that point because there may be another declaration coming. Uh, Councillor Scott. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, again, likewise, it's within my ward, Axvale, but I've taken no part in any discussion, so I'm not predetermined. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as I was saying, in terms of decorations, it's important that members declare them if, if there are any. Um, we have a standing order within this committee which basically to avoid members predetermining, in effect, making up their mind before they come to this committee, that they are advised uh, not to be involved at the parish or town council level to enable them to come fresh to this meeting and, and, a, and deal with an application before them. So where you've heard the members declare that they've taken no part at that level, it is so that it is clear that uh, they can come to this meeting without having made their mind up and they are not predetermined. If we move then on to the applications themselves and the first application I think we have before us this afternoon with a speaker is on page 33 of your paid papers uh, it is the application in Chapel Allerton and if I could ask Mr Titchener if you could uh, introduce this application for us today please. Uh, thank you uh, Chairman just present the screen Hopefully that's all coming through. So it's an application for the erection of a barn. Mr. Titchener, could you just wait for one moment? It's not. It has now come through to us. So there is a little bit of a delay, but right, okay. if you I'll, can, I'll uh, click through slowly in that case. Thank um, you very much. So it's an application for the erection of a barn for the storage of hay. It's located at land to the east of Mark Road, Chapel Allerton, Axbridge. Uh, so it's located uh, to the southwest uh, of uh, Chapel Allerton uh, within this field here. This is a slightly older aerial shot that doesn't show some of the buildings that, which are currently already on the site. There are already two buildings uh, that are there and this is a bit of a close up. So just showing the, the, uh, the access comes in here and there's two buildings which I'll show photos of just in, the, uh, in here. Uh, so a location plan uh, also showing the site um, and uh, one of the buildings here that's currently present, another of the buildings that is here currently present uh, and a uh, site which I'll show in a second for uh, the additional building to go here. Uh, so this is the, the block plan showing the proposal. So there is an existing track which comes between the two buildings and it's proposed that the hay barn that would be erected would be located here, just uh, within this uh, small cluster of buildings. It is an open fronted, um, fairly uh, standard agricultural uh, building uh, with a mono pitch roof uh, measuring uh, seven point, about seven meters along its uh, width and 18 meters long its length, uh, a three bay uh, unit 
um, with uh, box profile sheeting, um, uh, sort of fairly standard elevations for this type of unit. And a uh, floor plan just showing the open fronted nature of the building there, uh, which would face in toward the courtyard. Just some photographs of the site for context. So these photographs show the two existing buildings looking in over the access point here. So uh, the open uh, uh, shed building for storage uh, and for cattle leading in, the other existing building for storage, and then the siting of the third building would go in this location here off of this central courtyard. Again, just looking in from the access here, you can see the existing building, um, uh, one of the existing buildings, and it would be located within that group. And then just a couple of uh, photographs to follow of the roadside access. So looking back up the road towards Chapel Arts from here, and then looking back down the road uh, uh, away from the site to the south in that photograph. Um, so we're in a rural, rural area. Um, uh, were um, to the southwest of the settlement. And the site was, as you can see, all my photos, photographs are taken from the access point, um, so the gate was locked. But I've taken these photographs from the design and access statement just to show a bit of context as to the agricultural barns and their, uh, and their use. So this is the, this, these photos were just provided of the main big agricultural barn, which at the moment has been used for storage of fodder uh, and raising of cattle. So just in terms of policy context for the site, so it's a proposal in a countryside location. Policies are obviously quite restrictive in, in the countryside, but they do allow for agricultural development. The applicant in this case is a young farmer, has worked on other farms and is now setting up his own business. Um, so, and that business involved the erection of two buildings in recent years. So he farms 38 acres and currently has 36 cattle, ranging in age from two weeks to, uh, to eight months. He is a sort of Angus cross or blue British cross. He rears them on to 24 months uh, in total. And it's, it, it's obviously an expanding holding. Uh, he, he's now looking to set up this additional building to uh, give, increase his storage space on site, um, uh, so he can store additional hay. Now, planning policies are supportive of uh, expanding businesses in rural areas uh, and obviously this is a young farmer trying to increase his uh, the extent of his holding uh, which has reached capacity so far. It is in a rural location to the southwest of Chapel Allerton but there are two buildings on site and the positioning of the new building is such that it will form a small uh, a small complex and it will be partially seen against the backdrop of those other buildings. It's been quite well located in terms of proximity and can be accessed off the court off that central sort of courtyard area. We're not in any kind of designated landscape. There are mature boundaries around the site and trees you can see from the photographs. The design and form of the building is quite typical for the use that's proposed. And as officers, we consider the design and any visual impact to be acceptable. In terms of any other matters arising, um, there are no nearby properties, and we don't consider that there's any amenity issues that would arise from the, from the use of the building. Um, the Paris Council have raised the issue of flood risk, um, but it is in an area uh, of low flood risk. It is in flood zone one, uh, so it's not an area where we'd be seeking to um, uh, preclude development on the grounds of flood risk. There has been a surface water drain scheme proposed by the applicant, and that is proposed to be controlled by a condition to secure its implementation. The Paris Council had raised highways as some concern, but it's generally accepted that agricultural development has to take place in the countryside, and that's something that the Highway Authority is always keen to tell us. They, they've only given, they would only ever give standing advice on this type of application, but I think if you, as you can see from the photographs of the access, there does seem to be good visibility in either direction, uh, nonetheless. Um, the Paris Council had also requested a condition precluding the future change of use of this building to a dwelling. Now, that's something that needs planning permission anyway. We wouldn't need to put a, a condition on to preclude um, uh, that. that. That would always be, be the case, and any such application would, of course, be considered on its own merits. Just not on the slide, but the Paris Council had also raised concern about uh, lighting, um, about whether there should be controls over over lighting. Um, 
Reviewing the planning history, it does seem um, in the report it stated that we hadn't been putting lighting conditions on. It does seem there's been there has been a little bit of inconsistency in that one of the previous applications on this site had a lighting condition, the other did not. It is a bit difficult because there is accepted that there will be some a, a low level operational activity with agriculture that will involve some lighting. Um, obviously, there are a lot of permitted development rights for. for that are available to, to farmers that can erect buildings where no such controls over lighting could be imposed. Now, I hadn't felt it necessary to impose a condition on this permission. Now, I think if that's something that members of the committee feel strongly about, then I think we could impose a condition which, which is worded to the effect that any external lighting shall only illuminate the application site and, and no other areas. That's an option if the committee felt it, it, it necessary. Um, but Ultimately, having reviewed the extent of what was proposed, uh, we felt the application was acceptable and our recommendation is to grant permission. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we do have speaker on this uh, application, which is uh, Margaret Wallach from the Chapel Allison Parish Council. So, Mrs Nicholson, if you could enable the speaker's microphone and if I could just ask if the speaker could just confirm by, speak, by, by speaking to us that it is actually working for us. I can confirm it is. I am Margaret Wallach and I am a parish councillor on the Chapel Eldon Parish Council. Terrific. Um, if you could just hold on one minute, uh, just, just reminding you've got the three minutes, there will be the bell when you've got one minute left to go. So when the bell goes, you've still got a minute of, of time. Start whenever you're, whenever you're ready, please. Okay, I can do this well within the three minute um, time frame. Uh, the parish council has two principal concerns. One is the overdevelopment of a very small parcel of land which is approximately 5.50 acres and which is open countryside and on Bingham Moor. It's not a designated area as Mr Titchener pointed out. There are already two existing buildings and as the applicant says in their statement this will appear as one in the landscape and the parish council considers that that would be also um, overdevelopment as well as the second point uh, visually intrusive into the landscape. Um, the, the third point is that um, being visually intrusive that if the um, development committee is minded to uh, grant it then there should be a screening of um, some form of hedging uh, to uh, conceal these buildings as the lane is uh, windy and they can be seen from afar and are not shielded by the existing present hedge. They're the principal points that the parish council is concerned with and again they would like some conditions on it that any external lighting that is approved would only be to light this particular area and wouldn't uh, be seen further afield and that there is a surface water drainage plan as this area is subject to flood. Also that um, the um, landscaping should be approved uh, by the council. They're the only points I would like to make. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions from members? I think I've got uh, Councillor Bradford. Hello, Mr Chairman. Hello. Councillor Bradford. I knew Scott was before me. Oh, no, you, no. I think that was relating to her declaration of interest. Right, OK, right. Um, I think we've got a young farmer here who's prepared to stick at it and try and make a living, etc. What's going to happen in a, in a predominantly livestock area Chapel Allerton, predominantly a grass growing area, so you'd want buildings for silage, hay, etc. etc. I can't see a lot of problem with it, to be frankly, Mr. Chairman. Only one thing I'm going to suggest that these buildings are, are screened. A little bit of sensible landscaping around it to, to, hide, to hide some of the visual impact of it all, really. Otherwise, I really can't see a lot wrong with this, to be honest. And I think a, a lad this age should be encouraged at what's happening because. We're going to lead these farmers. The average age of a farmer now is, I think, is 66, I think. So you'd imagine what's going to happen in four or five years' time, right? So really, um, I've got no problem. I'll move and I'll support the planning officer. Right? Okay. And uh, I'll, move I... it, I'll move it. Okay. 
if we could just check, Mr. Titchener, did you want to just come back in, in the question that was raised about landscaping? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. I mean, I, I think what you what we wouldn't be able to do necessarily with landscaping is completely hide the buildings, but you can use landscaping to filter out some of those views and just soften some of the views and maybe reinforce any hedgerows or anything that you know need strengthening. And I'd have no objection to putting on a landscaping condition to achieve such a thing if members felt it necessary. Very much so. Softening, softening is the word. Softening is the word. You know, good PR. You need that. Obviously, the the parish councillor are, are a bit iffy, so it's far better to be sweet with them. Far better. Thank you, and, Mr. Chairman. And Councillor Bradford, if if I heard you correctly, you were moving the recommendations. So I am. I am moving that. Yes. Can I just confirm then that, that is with the amended condition to allow for a a landscaping condition. Uh, Obviously, the issue was raised by the, the speaker also about the, the lighting of the site. Is that something you want to have built in there? If anything is essential, but but I, I don't say you can avoid that, actually, because it's probably some work going to be done during the winter, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I find okay. that a very diff difficult one to, to, to get behind. OK, we'll I, see I, how, the, I, how the debate okay. goes. Listen to the debate. That's it. OK, okay. Councillor Hendry. No problem. Councillor Hendry. Good afternoon, Mr Chairman. I, I agree with most things my colleague, uh, Councillor Alan Bradford, said there. You've got a young farmer who's obviously trying his best to make a go of things, investing a lot of money in this. Uh, his, this building is in the middle of nowhere. It's in the edge of a field. I know it's, it's his own buildings there, but it's not causing any obstruction, visual or otherwise, to anybody else. And I think you should have the planning permission absolutely outright with no conditions whatsoever. I think everything's okay. It's not causing anybody any problem at all. The man's doing a good job. I'm happy to second the recommendation, and I don't impose any conditions on it at all. Nothing. It's okay as it is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I think we, what we'll have to do is we'll, we'll come back and clarify, because obviously at the moment we've got – there was a proposition from Councillor Bradford which did include a condition, additional one. So we'll we'll come back to that in due course, depending on how the debate has gone as to what members wish to, wish to do. Okay. Um, I've got Mr. Noon. Did you want to comment? Uh, just really on the conditions, if I may, um, just in terms of the expectation of a, an external lighting condition, I think we'd always sort of, we'd have to accept you would be able to see the light because obviously it's going to illuminate the working area. So the expectation you will not be able to see the light, I think, is, is unfortunate, unrealistic. But I would suggest, though, as opposed to Mr. Titchener's wording, I would suggest that we just secure the detail, including the shrouding and means of preventing light spillage. Um, as by, by condition, I think you know, I, I would err away from saying, you know, dictating which parts of the site it should illuminate, because I think the, the difficulty there is the light effect will be seen, but we need to control the, you know, the directional bit through the condition. I would just word it like that instead. Okay. Uh, Councillor Scott? <clears throat> yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I um, totally agree with uh, Councillor Bradford. Uh, a young farmer should be encouraged. Um, although this may be a small site, it's five acres. Um, he does farm 38 acres, so he has presumably got land within that area. So it's just a field. I would support the idea of screening um, these buildings. I've done it myself. It's quite easy to do with some trees that you can just plant. I'd suggest trees rather than hedging because they'll grow to a more of a mature height and it would blend more into the countryside. And I guess there will be conditions probably on the color of the roof, etc., which is normal. Um, I would accept um, what um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Noon has said about the lighting. I think that's important that there shouldn't be any spillage um, because there lights obviously will be needed probably during the winter, uh, maybe during the summer sometime, but the spillage aspect could be controlled, which I would agree to. Um, there was a mention that there's going to be um, sud um, alleviation on site, um, which is good because although it's not in a flood area, you still need to get the water away and, and that will slow the emergence of it. Um, so I'm very happy with the, um, with the recommendation, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kingham. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I think a lot of what I was going to say has already been said. But it's um, looking at the photographs that Mr. Titchener produced, 
And when you look at the farm, it's all very tidy. Everything's uh, low, low key. Um, the, far, the hay barn is not exactly a very large barn. It's all well within keeping for the whole um, development. Um, I don't particularly have a problem with this. Um, I think the lighting may be just something that needs to be looked at carefully, but uh, otherwise I have no problem with this application. Thank you. Councillor Glassford. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I can see no problem with this application. Uh, certain doubts about putting any conditions on lighting and that, but uh, I think we should encourage this this sort of thing, and uh, I totally support it. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I can't see any problem with this either, um, and I'm happy for it to be approved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pearce. Oh, sorry, uh, Mrs Lehman. Um, thank you, Chairman. If I could ask or clarify, um, we had um, one um, resolution to move to officer recommendation with a landscape condition, and then we had a second without the condition. I think actually that's a, a se second separate resolution without a condition. So um, can we just clarify that and um, maybe clarify that at the end? Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, it was certainly my, my plan is to return to uh, to the, the, the proposer once we'd had the debate so we could take on board if, if there were views that were being expressed. So I will be coming back to Councillor Bradford uh, in terms of the conditions in, in just a moment. Uh, Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Chairman. I was just going to second Councillor Bradford's um, proposal with the landscaping. OK. Um, Councillor Bradford, if I could just return to you. Um, obviously, there's there's been a We've, I've got to the end of all the speakers at the moment. There's been a debate about the various conditions. Obviously, you had highlighted the issue of, of landscaping um, and the other issue of lighting was brought up, but you were going to consider whether you felt that was something you wanted to have as a condition or not. You heard Mr Noon's comments. Uh, can I just ask you what you want to do in that situation, please? If, if something can be done quite simply, the lighting could come into the issue. But anything complicated, you know, you've got, you, you, we've got to get in the real world. You know, money's not easy to make anymore, and some of these things are too damn expensive to make. It's got to be realistic, right, and practical. So, and as, I I still go, yeah. as I understood from Mr Noon, the, the, his suggestion was that we would have a, a lighting condition that would, would need to be complied with, which could be a uh, – the, the, it would be asking for detail of lighting to be submitted before it was actually erected. Is that my understanding correct, Mr Noon? Yes, I think just that, just simply for any external lighting, we get to see the details and agree those details prior to the installation. That obviously wouldn't include anything on the inside of the buildings. Okay. I, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that, Mr Chairman. Okay, and Mrs Pierce, are you happy with that as you're seconding yes. that? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, I've got Mr Titchener. Before I come to any vote, Mr. I mean, Tichner. just it was just a very small point to say it costs the same to discharge two conditions as it does one. So, if that's of uh, just to clarify, okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, before I come to the vote, I think I've got Councillor Hendry. No, absolutely fine. Uh, what, what I was going to ask has actually been covered down in my surveillance fine, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Excellent. I'm not seeing any other members indicating so we have a recommendation which is to to grant permission with the additional conditions relating to uh, lighting and landscaping if everyone's happy with that then we'll move to the vote what i will do is come to each member in turn asking you to confirm that you were present and able to hear the presentation and debate throughout this item uh, and then to give your vote of either for, against, or abstaining in terms of granting permission with those extra conditions. So, if we start with, uh, should we start with Councillor Murphy this time? Yes, Chairman, I was present and heard everything and saw everything during the debate, and I am for granting permission. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Revens. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Chairman. I can confirm that I've been present throughout the presentation and the debates, and my vote is in favour of the proposition. Thank you. Councillor Kingham? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yes, no, I've been present through the whole debate. 
and I would like to move the recommendation. Uh, do you want to vote for it as well? I'll vote for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I've been, I've been here all the debate. You've probably reckon not used those out already. Not like Stuart. Hello, Stuart. Right. And I totally, totally support the planning officer. Totally support it. Thank you very much. Councillor Bolt. Conditions, yeah. Councillor Bolt. Yeah, present throughout the whole application. Heard all of the debate and I'm for it. Thank you. Councillor Perry. Yes, thank you. I was uh, present through all the debate and the presentation and I'm for it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Grimes. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've heard and seen all the presentation, and I'm for. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Hendry. I've seen and heard everything, uh, Mr Chairman, and yes, I'm, I'm for it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I've seen and heard the whole debate, and I'm for the um, application. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Hello, yeah, I've seen and heard the whole debate and application, and I, I'm going to abstain. Okay. Councillor Pearce. Thank you. I confirm I've seen and heard the whole presentation and debate, and I am for the recommendation with the conditions. Thank you very much. Councillor Glassford. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've seen it and heard the whole debate. I am... Um, for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Granta. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I can confirm that I've heard the presentation and all the debate, and I am for. Thank you. And lastly, myself, I also have heard the presentation and the debate, uh, and I'm also for the, the proposal that's been moved to grant. Um, Mrs Nicholson, I think that is everybody. If you could just give us the result of the vote, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's 13 in support and one abstention. That's great. Thank you. That's clearly carried. So permission is, is granted with the additional conditions that were, were outlined during the debate. Right, members, if you could move on to our next application, which is uh, Steert. Um, if I could refer you to start with to the uh, um, the agenda paper, the additional papers that were sent round to you relating, which refer to this supplementary report and the Habitats Regulations Assessment, which we will be looking at before we move on to the actual detail of the application itself. And if members have got those those papers, I will then ask uh, Mrs DeVries if you could take us through the Habitats Regulations and supplementary report to start with, please. Thank you. Um, the presentation has been timed in two parts. So the first bit will cover the HRA and then we'll move on to the planning application once members have um, determined the HRA. So um, just to start off, it was noted that there was a typo in the address of the development, but this has now been rectified. Um, as an update following the publication of the report, Natural England have now responded to the Habitats Regulation Assessment, which members will be asked to endorse before considering the planning application. Natural England's comment has resulted in a minor change to the wording of the proposed condition, which is condition three on the report, which I will cover later in the presentation. An informative is now also proposed to confirm that this application does not grant consent for the use of the building as a cafe or restaurant, although that's not what is being applied for and is before members today. An additional condition is also proposed um, to control the removal of the existing ground floor office units and should read prior to the first use of the engagement hub hereby approved the existing ground floor office porter cabin shall be removed from the site and the reason for that is in the interest of visual immunity of the site and flood risk so the application is before members as otterhampton parish council have objected to the application on highway safety grounds due to the narrow access road leading to the site potential for car and pedestrian conflict semi-blind junction at biffins corner and lack of appropriately maintained passing places. So this site um, is identified on this slide with a blue pin and located northeast of Otterhampton and Stockland Bristol, falling within the Stockland Bristol Parish. The site also lies to the southwest of Sturt and forms part of a managed coastal realignment scheme delivered by the Environment Agency and managed by the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust, which is WWT. 
So the site is accessed from Sturt Drove and forms part of the National Nature Reserve, providing a national ha um, priority habitat. And as such, the application is subject to HRA assessment, so it's a habitat regulations assessment, which needs to be agreed by members ahead of determining this application. The site is connected to the Seven Estuary Special Protection Area, which is SPA and Special Area of Conservation, SAC, and the Seven Estuary Ramsar site, which provided for a coastal plain estuary comprising two thirds subtidal habitats and one third intertidal habitats. The designation supports an ecosystem for a wide range of fish species for feeding, breeding, resting, and migration. The Somerset Level of Moors, Spa and Ramsar is noted for the availability of food supply with wintering and migratory birds linked to the seven estuary habitats. The sustainability of these can be impacted on by the nature, scale, timing and duration of human activity. The moorlands also provide terrestrial habitat for aquatic invertebrates. The Exmoor and Quantock Oaks Woodlands SAC provides valuable habitat which can also support bats and otters. So the local planning authority under the conservation of habitats and species regulations 2017 has a duty as the competent authority to secure compliance with the requirements of the habitat directive. The HRA found that this site has potential to affect the seven estuary spa Ramsar and some set levels of more spa and Ramsar. Um, although stage one identified it was uncertain whether a significant effect would occur to the above designations in respect of overwintering birds and due to the short term construction impacts. The HRA was then subject to an appropriate assessment under stage two. The application lies approximately 100 metres east of a roof site, although this is not accessible from the site and the site itself is not considered to provide functionally linked land supporting the overwintering birds. Potential impacts on this designation, the Ramsar site, the Somerset Levels and Moors SPA, would be during construction and if, as a result of the development, trips to and from the site increase. The development was not considered to impact on the Seven Estuary SAC or result in any habitat loss for bats or otters, with wildflower planting potentially supporting prey species hunted by bats. Due to the line of the site for this development, visual impact on the SPA and Ramsar site was considered unlikely due to hedgerows, scrubs and buns, although construction noise has potential to impact. The HRA concluded that temporary impacts during the construction period in terms of displacement was considered to be appropriately controlled through a condition limiting the timing of structural demolition and piling to between April and September and no piling other than screw piling between June and September and as agreed in, in accordance with the programme of works. So subject to this condition, members are recommended to agree the habitats regulation assessment as the council considers that the proposed development would not have any adverse impact on the integrity of a European site. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions on the habitats regulations assessment and supplementary report? Uh, Councillor Kingham. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, here, here we have another um, habitat regulations. Um, it almost got away with not mentioning bats, but one couple <laughs> crept in there. It was interesting the fact that they mentioned in the report about the demolition and rebuilding of the build of the new toilet block, how it could affect um, the wildlife as far as the Somerset levels, which is uh, quite interesting. But um, I found it interesting reading and I would like to move the recommendation. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions from members? Councillor Revens. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with Councillor Kingham, a, a, a very interesting report. Um, just one, one thing I noticed on page nine and page 11, there's a reference to Oakhampton, and I was quite surprised to see that. Um, I was wondering whether it might be a typo for a neighbouring village. Um, it, it is the report as given to me by the county ecologist, so I, I could go back and raise for further clarity, but it is the report primarily uh, provided by the county ecologist in, on behalf of the HRA. Okay, it's telling me that obviously Oakhampton is 70 miles away. 
Mm. And um, I, I was, I was, would have, I had read it as though it, they meant Otterhampton. Um, I'm sure the county ecologist knows the difference between an, an oak and an otter. Um, but I think we just need to clarify that you didn't get the words wording right. But I'm, I'm yeah, pro, pro, on proviso that we do, we double check that point. I'm happy to second uh, Councillor Kingham's uh, proposal. Thank you very much. And just for for the members of the public present who who may not have the uh, the documentation in front of them in terms of the recommendation just to, to read what it is it is that it is recommended the habitats regulations assessment report and associated provision attached as appendix one be endorsed by the assistant director as the competent authority in reaching the decision to agree the habitats regulation assessment the council considers that the proposed development would not have an adverse impact on the integrity of a european site so if there's no further comments or questions from members, which I'm not seeing at the moment, we have had that resolution proposed and seconded. So we'll start uh, this time, if we might, with uh, Councillor Grimes. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've seen and heard it all, and I'm for that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I've seen and heard it all, and yes, I'm I'm for it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bolt. Yeah, present throughout and for it. Thank you, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've heard and seen all the debate, and I'm I'm for it, all for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Kingham. Yes, Chairman. I've I've read and listened to the debate, and I'm for it. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Yes, Chairman. I've seen and heard the whole debate, and I'm for it. And Councillor Revens. A slight change in order there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You, 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 you almost tripped me up. Sorry. Um, yeah, um, yes, I've been present and heard and seen everything. I'm happy to support this HRA. Thank you. Councillor Hendry. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. I've seen and heard everything and, yes, 100% happy for it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I've read the report and I've seen and heard the debate and I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Yeah, hello. Yeah, I've seen and heard and listened and read and I support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Pearce. Thank you. Yep, I've seen and heard the whole presentation and read the report and I am for it. Thank you, Councillor Glassford. Thank you, Chairman. I've seen and heard uh, the report and I am for the uh, I am for it. Thank you. And Councillor Granter. Yes, Chairman, seen and heard the report and uh, I am for. Thank you. And I've also seen heard the, the report on the HRA and am for the recommendation that's been moved and seconded. So, Mrs. Nicholson, if you could just confirm the votes, please. That's unanimous. 14. Thank you very much. So the so the resolution is, is clearly carried to uh, to to support the HRA findings. And that allows us then to move on to page 39 of your report and the actual application itself. And again, Mrs. DeVries, if you could take us through the details of this, please. Thank you very much. Um, so that moves us on to the planning application and the main considerations are principle of development, size and design, impact on heritage assets, impact on adjoining properties, highway considerations, impact on ecology, flood risk and drainage. So this slide shows a site location plan with the site outlined in red. And this slide shows the current layout with the ancillary buildings to the northwest of the site at the top of the image and the existing toilet block to the northeast boundary, which is closer to Sturt Drove um, and the car park to the southwest within the site. Moving to slide seven, this is an aerial view that shows the existing site, car park and compound. The grey building hatched in red is the existing toilet block and the yellow outline indicates the full extent of the development proposed with a new rainwater pond shown on the northwest of the building. The existing port cabin office buildings are indicated to the rear of the site and would be removed once the engagement hub is constructed. In terms of principle, the site falls within a countryside location, although due to the requirement of these facilities in connection with the ongoing maintenance um, of Sturt Peninsula, officers satisfied that there is um, that the location is essential and would result in an enhanced community and cultural facility in accordance with policy S2 and D35 of the local plan. 
The replacement of the existing porter cabin site offices would also result in an enhancement in terms of visual impact. So if members can note the location of the access just before we move to the next slide because it reorientates a little. So this plan has just been reorientated to show the access to the side of the slide. Um, the green roof for the building lies over the two ground floor areas, one just below the terrace providing replacement toilet facilities and the other more centrally under the green roof to provide access to the first floor. No additional car parking is proposed and the area around the building would be planted with wildflower and would form part of the sustainable drainage facility in connection with this site. In terms of character and context, the next few slides show the existing site. So the top image is taken from within the site looking northeast towards the existing toilet block and the bottom image is taken um, from the start of the footpath bridleway on the opposite side of Sturt Drove looking northwest. The top image again within the site looking east and from the footpath to the southeast looking northwest where members can just make out the roof of the single storey block um, as indicated by the red arrow. Based on this there would be some limited view of the building in the wider location. The top photo shows the existing office accommodation to the rear of the existing car park and the bottom shows a wider view where members may just be able to make out the flat roof of the porter cabins. In terms of the proposal, this slide shows the ground floor, which is broken into two separate blocks, with a replacement toilet block stepped slightly forward of the curved roof and sited under the decking, with the second forming the entrance lobby and with a drying utility space to serve the first floor. If members can um, make note of the external staircase, which is indicated by the red arrow, so this continues to the covered terrace at first floor, which is above ground, which is above the ground floor toilets, which is indicated on this slide by a blue box. The first floor of the hub includes office space, facilities and meeting training spaces. Natural England and the ecologists were keen to confirm that the building does not contain any cafe or restaurant facility and it would require a change of use to do so. As such, whilst it would be unreasonable to condition this, an informative will be added or is recommended to be added in this case. So moving on to slide 14, the building has been designed with a mixture of contemporary and traditional materials which are listed on the bottom of this slide. The overhanging green roof is intended to integrate the building into the landscape and is designed to provide a natural solar shade to, pre to prevent bird strike. A mix of materials are considered to result in a building of visual interest with minimal impact on the wider landscape. The green roof presents flood, flood risk benefits and creates a natural habitat encouraging biodiversity, whilst the proposed terrace would allow for an area of safe refuge in the event of flood risk, whether or not the hub was open. The supporting information confirms the development would be DDA compliant with lift in the main complex and the layout complying with part M of building regulations. Based on the site constraints and the design proposed, there is no objection raised by officers in respect of size, scale and design, and the development is considered to be in accordance with policy D2. So moving to slide 15, um, the proposed development is situated within an area of known archaeological interest, which was investigated and recorded as part of the previous wetland creation habitat scheme. Conditions for additional archaeological interest within the site are considered to be limited due to the minimal physical impacts of groundworks associated with the development and given the previous construction on site. As such, the development was considered to have little or no effect on the significance of the historic environment and no further, no further ecological investigation is required. On slide 16, and moving on to impact on adjoining properties, the um, application site is outlined on this slide in a light blue and Marsh Farm is located to the top of this slide outlined in red and lies to the northeast of the site at a distance of 292 metres. Rose Cottage is outlined in red at the bottom of the slide and is located southwest on Sturt Drove set at a distance of 634 metres. If members could note the dark blue circle showing the junction in onto Sturt Drove as this will be shown in the highway consideration section shortly. 
that's on slide 17. This shows the boundary of the site looking northeast towards Marsh Farm. The red arrow shows the boundary um, and the blue arrow indicates the location of Sturt Drove. There are no properties or buildings visible from this site looking southwest, so in the opposite direction, due to the existing hedged boundaries and landscaping. So given this degree of separation and the nature and materials of the building proposed, there's not considered to be any direct impact on neighbours. So this slide shows the junction of Sturt Drove, um, where there is a tight bend to the left, resulting in the need for vehicles to stop before turning into this road. Concerns were raised by the Parish Council regarding the narrow nature of the access road, limited and poorly maintained passing places, and highway safety concerns regarding potential vehicle and pedestrian conflicts. So from this junction towards the entrance of the site, the top image shows a view from the entrance of the site southwards down Sturt Drove, and the bottom image is a view from Sturt Drove looking um, northeast towards the site. The existing development is currently screened by hedging from this viewpoint and members should note while the road is narrow in places there is good forward visibility and a number of passing places available. These views show um, these show views towards the site from Sturt Drove looking southwest. The top one is at distance and shows one of the passing bays and the second is closer with signage indicating the location of the upcoming car park. The proposed building would be located approximately where the blue arrow is shown on the uh, bottom photograph. The top slide details current visibility to the northeast and the bottom current visibility to the southwest. The site provides 40 parking spaces within the car park and an additional car park, which was opened in May um, 2018, provided an additional 34 spaces. The development is not proposing to increase traffic generation to or from the site and is not proposing any additional parking spaces as part of this application. The internal accommodation provided would serve the existing use on site and not in themselves considered to give rise to an increase in generation. The transport statement supporting this application outlines vehicular and pedestrian trips to the site, which suggest while there was initially an increase in traffic, this appears to have levelled. It is noted that this area is not served by public transport and therefore generates car, cycle and pedestrian trip rates, with approximately half confirmed as um, either on foot or by bike. County Highways confirmed a number of highway improvements were implemented as part of the wider Sturt Marshes project, which improved visibility, road alignment and provided passing places. Maintenance of these would fall to the area highways team as Sturt drove his public highway. With these in place, and given the development is not seeking to increase generation, officers are satisfied development would not result in any adverse highway impact. In respect of ecology, the building has been designed to accommodate bat roosts, as shown on this slide hatched in red in the roof void below the green seed roof. Planting is proposed on the terrace to accommodate for birds, and sunscreens for the large areas of glazing to act as a secondary measure to prevent bird strike. The undercroft to the rear of the building would remain open, providing a nesting opportunity for birds if appropriate. Additional measures are also proposed in respect of bird boxes and bee bricks. The blue hatching shown on the glazing indicates UV patterned glass to eliminate bird collision risk and the overhang of the roof is to encourage nesting for swallows and pied wagtails. Roost and nesting opportunities are proposed all around the building. Subject to the amendment to condition three as set out as part of the HRA and the other conditions recommended to secure the above mitigation officers, um, offers, um, officers are satisfied that the development would result in an enhancement to the area. The site is located in flood zone 3A, although due to the functional locational need, the sequential test has been passed. The construction of the building is flood resilient in terms of materials and the office accommodation is effectively on stilts. The development would result in the removal of the existing ground floor office cabins and provides a safe refuge for anyone visiting the site, whether or not the hub was open. In terms of drainage, the proposal would feed into a water treatment wetland system that's been designed to over provide relative to the capacity requirements of this development and the IDB is satisfied with the proposal subject to a condition requiring drainage details to be submitted and agreed. Officers are therefore satisfied that the development is appropriate 
um, relative to flood risk and in accordance with policy D1. So in conclusion, the site is located in the countryside, but a, lo um, a locational need um, has been identified and it would provide an enhanced community and cultural facility and would therefore be in accordance with policy D2 and um, S2 and D35. Officers consider the development to be an appropriate size, scale and design which would blend into the landscape and would not result in any adverse impact in terms of heritage assets or amenities of the adjoining residents. The application is served by a narrow access road but with passing places and this is characteristic of the surrounding area and car speeds are often reduced due to the nature of the highway network. Officers are satisfied the proposal is not seeking to generate additional movements and given the improvement measures already implemented, there is no highway safety objection. There are a number of ecological benefits detailed as part of the application and conditions are proposed to secure these. Based on the details provided, officers are happy that there is a locational requirement for the development passing the sequential test and flood resilience measures have been built into the construction. The application is therefore recommended for conditional approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. As members will see, we do have a, a speaker on this application, uh, which is uh, Alice Laver, who is the applicant. Uh, Mrs. Nicholson, if you could enable the speaker's microphone, please. And if I could ask if the speaker could just confirm that the microphone is working. As yet, I'm not hearing anything. So, Mrs. Nicholson, have we enabled the microphone? Try again. Hello. Terrific. That's, is that Sorry. Alice Laver? It is, yes. Excellent. Apologies. <laughs> That's all right. No problem at all. Just again to remind you, you've got the three minutes to address the committee. And when you hear the bell, that means you've got one minute left to go. So start when you're ready, please. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, well, from looking at slide 11, you can see the porter cabins that the team has been residing in since 2014. It was only ever meant to be temporary and they're clearly unfit for purpose. Um, not least for health and safety reasons, being overrun with rats, with freezing in the winter and unbearably hot in the summer, and the limited space does make for a very stressful environment for the office staff trying to undertake work with the sociable element of our volunteer groups coming in and out, providing training or talks all in the same space. Um, slide 13 showing the layout, um, sort of the entire team, including our volunteers and myself, are really excited at the prospect of a permanent office with designated space that incorporates all the fantastic work currently being undertaken. It will definitely raise the morale of staff and volunteers who will undoubtedly feel more valued. Not having to compromise on the space and the resources will also allow us to work a lot more effectively and deliver a much higher quality of engagement. The site has gone from strength to strength and the need for a learning and training space is key to continue the development of our 60 plus volunteers and in 2009 we clocked nearly 5,500 volunteer hours which is equivalent to 3.2 members of staff. We directly engaged with 3,500 people last year through events and talks on and off site and we've been focusing on health and well-being benefits of wetlands and working with groups such as Somerset Wellbeing and Learning. We're pursuing opportunities with similar groups and having a safe and welcoming space will be obviously really important. The heart of STEER is to demonstrate the value of wetlands, to provide people and wildlife with nature-based solutions and tackling climate change and supporting Somerset County Council's target for zero carbon footprint by 2030. Obviously, to bring around real change, we require support from stakeholders such as politicians, some of which have already visited, and a proper office space will enable us to engage with key audiences in a much more professional manner. The continued research has been pride of the scheme. We've got innovative science being undertaken that's not being done anywhere else. And with levels of education, um, we, uh, from local primary schools to universities, uh, this equated to a third of our engagement last year, and the provision of an indoor learning area, especially when the weather's horrendous, would definitely add to their experience. With a focus now on bigger, more connected landscapes and several partnership projects being pursued, an office space that could potentially accommodate other organizations as well would certainly strengthen the future of the area and the value it could add to wildlife and people. And just I'd like to stress, since the very first consultations began, WWT has been mindful of the local community's concerns regarding traffic generation and the placement of the main car park and decision to not have a cafe or shop on site illustrate our commitment to limiting visitor numbers and their associated dwell time. 
I would like to reassure the committee that we will continue to monitor vehicle and visitor numbers and use the data to inform and review levels of engagement to ensure we're not over-promoting the scheme. We would like it to be a space that the local community can utilize and strengthen the relationship even further. And I really hope thank the committee you. will be still the support. I'm going to have to call time on you there, but thank you. Thank you thank very you. much for that. Thank you. <laughs> members, I've got a, a number of members who wanted to speak. I just want, before we come to members, to, to just, if I could go back to Mrs. DeVries, and if you could just confirm in terms of the recommendation that's in front of us at the moment, um, I, I took note that you'd asked for a, uh, a condition that was going in for about the removal of the the uh, the existing porter cabins and an informative relating to the cafe. Were there any other adjustments to uh, recommendations that members need to be taking into account when they're actually making a recommendation, Mrs. De Vries? Um, it's just the minor adjustment to condition three, which has already been agreed through the HRA. So there's a, a minor addition to um, condition three as agreed through the HRA. There's an additional condition requiring the removal of the existing port cabin offices um, at point that this development um, opens, becomes operational, um, and an informative about the cafe restaurant use, which is not what's being applied for, but it's an informative just to um, raise it to the awareness of the applicant. Thank you very much. So I've got a number of members who've indicated to speak. They are Councillors Gibson, Scott, Pierce, and Bradford. So if we start with Councillor Gibson, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can I move a recommendation to grant permission, the uh, officer's recommendation? Just move that, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Scott. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I think this is a very interesting design and uh, it's certainly a lot better than the porter cabins on space, on, on site, rather. And um, I think it will boost the morale of the workforce and the volunteers, which is very important. Um, uh, Mr. Priest said that um, the uh, a condition to be added will be to remove the porter cabins, but um, what is to happen to that piece of land? Will it be reverted back to nature, um, or is it there for a car park or something? I wasn't quite sure about that. Just like to ask yep, no that problem. question, Mrs. De Vries. Thank you. Um, the area is currently used for ancillary storage, so they've got a number of um, sort of storage containers that are in there that they use just to store equipment. Um, I would suggest, given that they're involved in the maintenance of quite a large space, they would probably still need the the area as a as a maintenance store. Um, but the the buildings that are currently being used for offices would be removed from that location. Currently, it's fenced off from the car park. I think the second photo on the same slide that members would have seen at a distance um, does show a fairly minimal impact until you get up to the gates. When you, when you get up to the gates, the single story structures are quite prominent but at a distant view um, the storage area isn't isn't sort of too intrusive so um, the assumption is it would remain as a storage area but the office buildings would be removed. Thank you. Councillor Scott did you want to come back? Um, yes um, that's acceptable. Um, I'm just a bit concerned that it is a big wide open area and this building looks quite futuristic um, but whether there could be a condition to actually plant some trees in the area. Mrs. DeRees. Thank you. Um, I don't think we've got a landscape plan beyond the actual building. There's a lot of wildflower planting going on around the proposed building. If I just try and find the appropriate slide, bear with me. Um, I think it might be one of the first ones that we had before member so this one. Um, so effectively, this square here is is the green roof. So that's all planted with different species that would end up being sort of um, a habitat in its own right. This area here with, with the dark hatching is a wildflower planting, which is currently undertaken at the moment. The photo that we took looking at the neighbouring property that showed quite a high boundary um, along here, um, that was, um, I think, reeds in connection with the um, existing ditch that runs along this boundary across here. So there is quite a lot of screening sort of off in this direction. And then there is um, planting of hedgerow along here 
and along here. So we have conditioned it. There's also planting on the terrace along here and planting along here. And then again, hedgerows um, at the entrance of the site. And again, in this corner. So we have um, conditioned in accordance with the approved plans. And this does specify the level of planting and the detail of the planting on the approved plan. So we haven't done a specific landscape condition, um, but if members felt that was necessary, we could always impose that. But we were happy with the details provided on on this um, plan in terms of the landscaping for the application. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, got... Chairman, yes. Um, I'd, be, I'd be happy with that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I'm quite a fairly frequent visitor to State Marshes and it's such a fantastic resource mm. and I think this building will be an absolute asset to it for all the educational facilities it will provide. And I think it'll be actually quite low impact with the natural um, sort of materials and the green roof. So um, yeah, I agree with everything that the speaker said and I'm really happy to second it. Thank you very much. Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I'm all for this because my theme this year as a Mayor of North Petherton was the environment, and I'm well into that sort of thing. And how important the environment has proven to be or going to prove to be in the future, what's just happened. There's been a lot of thought gone into the design of that building for animals and people, I think, to be perfectly honest, so everybody should be happy. It's one thing I'm going to bring up, actually, all about wildflowers or what have you, but they aren't so... Um, uh, they don't have hide things as much as perhaps they should do. They look lovely, etc., etc. Now, you are in a marsh, sensitive sort of a soil area, but there are certain trees that do grow well in them sort of areas. And I do feel that sometimes that might be well to try and obscure that a little bit, I would have thought. But otherwise, the design of that place and the thought gone into it is marvellous. And I do wish all the people involved and all the volunteers all the best of luck because it's so important to our health and well-being. There's no question about that. And regarding the roads and approach roads, well, some of the pull-ins are maintained and sort of ma made sure they're maintained, and I can't see too much problem, to be perfectly frank with you. So uh, I'm all for it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I've got uh, Mr. Noon. Oh, just one thing. Sorry. Yeah, with Councillor Bradford. I didn't realise in my knowledge of bats, and you know how, how, how much I am in love with bats, and by God, they're important. There was a bat called the Barbastel bat. Have you, if you've read the report, you should be all with me. They specialise in preying upon the moss. So really, ecology ain't doing its job, really. There is it, really. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Bradford. <laughs> uh, Mr. Noon and then Councillor Kingham. Yeah, I was just going to flag up you know, um, the landscape issues, obviously, as, it, as a landscaping plan. Um, it might be prudent just to condition compliance with that plan, you know, to a time scale. Um, just if something were to slip on it, um, yeah, you know, I think it's always better to back that up with a requirement that the landscaping be done at the end by by a defined time. And I would suggest um, in the first planting season following the occupation of the building, just so we've got a backstop, so that we know that it will be done. Mrs. Debris. Yeah, happy to amend condition two to say with the planting to be undertaken within the first planting season following um, completion of the development, if, if members are happy with that. OK, I will just confirm that with a proposer and seconder. Councillor Gibson, are you happy with that amendment? Councillor Gibson? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I thought I got the mute off. Um, right. Yes, yes, that's fine. Thank you. Perfect. And Councillor Pearce? Yeah, me too, thanks. Excellent. Uh, Councillor Kingham. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, listening to the debate, I must say, I think it's quite a, a unique building. I'm not sure why why you want to put landscaping in there because why do you want to hide it? I mean, say it's it's taking care of all the wildlife that's going to be used in the building and the staff. They're uh, making quite a, a nice little accommodation for the staff there. Um, I think the, another parish council were against the additional traffic, but I can't see it will generate extra traffic because most of the people already work there. So I'm quite in favour of this um, application. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
I'm not seeing any other comments from members. So we have a proposal that has been to grant permission subject to the conditions as outlined by um, Mrs. DeVries and the informative relating to the non-cafe. Um, so I'll come to members for their votes in turn. And again, if you can just confirm that you've been present and have heard the whole debate and presentation. So we'll start uh, this time with uh, Councillor Granter. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I can confirm that I've heard the, all the presentation and all the debate, and then I think it's an excellent application, and uh, I wish everybody in the new building well and all the volunteers that, that help run that successfully. Thank you. And just to confirm, you're for. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Glassford. Councillor Glassford. I'll come back to Councillor Glassford then. Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've seen and heard the whole presentation and debate and I am for the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Gibson. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I've seen and heard and I'm for. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Scott. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've seen and heard the whole debate and I'm for the application with the um, suggested amendments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hendry. Up to you, Mr Chairman. I've seen and heard everything and I think it's a first class, very commendable application and, and I'm for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Yes, Chairman, I've seen and heard all the debate and I'm delighted to be for. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yes, confirm I've been present throughout the presentation and the debate and confirm my vote is in favour of this very strongly. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kingham. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I've listened and uh, understand the whole application and I'm for it. Thank you, Councillor Bradford. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I, I've been present and heard all the debate regarding this application and I'm very, very much in favour of it. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Bolt. Yes, sorry. Uh, yeah, present throughout the uh, application and debate and for it. Thank you, Councillor Perry. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I was uh, present through all the um, debate uh, and the presentation and I'm very happy to be for it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grimes. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, uh, I've heard and seen all the presentation. Uh, wonderful assets and I'm for it. Thank you. Thank you. Can we go back to Councillor Glassford? Yes, thank you, Chairman. She didn't have the whole debate, I am for the officer's recommendation. Thank you. And, and equally, uh, I've seen and heard the whole debate um, and in very much in favour of the, uh, the proposal to, to grant permission. Mrs Nicholson, is that all members? Yes, Chairman, that's unanimous at 14. That's terrific. So permission is, is clearly carried. Uh, so permission is granted. Thank you, members, uh, very much. Uh, that brings us to the end of the applications we have this afternoon. So if we uh, call the meeting to a close.